Welcome everybody. Hello. You are here for the Pro Chess League Summer Series. Let's go guys. Welcome to the stream. It's going down guys. Another one. We're going to have some fun today. How are you? It's uh it's uh Division D finally. The uh the biggest division as far as fans, so hopefully the biggest show we've had so far. And uh James, you've done 9 weeks of post-match show and now you're yes, on sir. Now you're on the show show. You got a big weekend of chess here. Yes, sir. I've made it to the big leagues. I have congratulate. I have uh, gra uh, you know, graduated over into into you guys today. So I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm uh, loving all the chess and all the pro chess league that we see every week for the summer series. So there will be no recap today. We're going to see a lot of good chess from the chess bras and Blitzstream and uh, the gnomes and the blizzard. I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. Thanks for the subscription in the chat from Photo Chess. It's it's going to be great. It's nothing but chess. All right. So, um, for anybody who doesn't know where you're at or what's up, the uh, Pro Chess League Summer Series is broken up into three um, three week sections, four divisions, three sections. We've got three in the past, and we're now going to show you the standings so far here for divisions A, B, and C. So you can see what went down last week, real quick. We had a tie for first place in Group C after the last match between Sao Paulo Capybaras and Moscow Wizards, which um, which actually is exactly what I predicted there, Canty. Ah, oh, you predicted that. Nice. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, <laughs> that's nice because uh, I saw Moscow Wizards and the Cap the Capybaras was uh, uh, one of those was going to get it, and I thought it was going to yeah. be the Wizards actually. I thought uh -huh. the Wizards was going to you know really pull it out, but. Uh, you, it, it shows that you just cannot like call it all the time. Like no, that. maybe you can't. maybe uh, maybe with St. Louis from Group A because they just ridiculous right now. But, yeah. Uh, group C is uh, every other group. Every other group is like you don't know what's going to happen. I'm excited to see what's going to happen in Group D. Some yeah. heavy hitters here, and, um, and yeah, let's get into it, man. I'm excited. Yeah, and actually we had two ties in Group C and Group B, so each of those divisions sort of gets decided by the fan count on August 14th, I believe, is the day. So, That's right. I mean, right now the copy bars kind of have an overwhelming fan club, but you never know for sure what's going to happen with that, which team will be seated first or second. Um, and now we're getting into Group D. You guys all see the teams that are here. You guys all know who these teams are probably. They don't need too much introduction. Um, and we got... We got our match uh, here is going to start in less than five minutes. So if you guys want to play, and, uh, you know, I advise it. I recommend it. Playing chess is pretty fun. If you guys want to play for your favorite team, uh, you got four minutes and a half to get in there and join them. Uh, you can join either the Chess Bros fan club or the Blitzstream fan club and then go to tournaments or go to the link that's been provided in chat and uh get in there and maybe we'll watch your game at some point today that's right guys we want to watch you it, this is about you the fans this is the pro chess league summer series it's about you so go in there play for all the teams at the same time we'll yeah play uh, that actually won't happen because the you know, live <laughs> chess doesn't allow you to do that but yeah. um you know what i mean play for any of the teams guys that will be in the chat of course um for you guys to play so a shout out to all the people in the chat right now steve is five says hi canty hello how are you What's going on, Fonza Curry and everyone else? Play for the teams. There are some some links in the chat. You can click on the club and play for the club right before it starts when we're having uh, the first matchup is going to be the Chess Bras versus Blitzstream. It's going down. Chess Bras versus the uh, Blitzstream in three minutes. So you got three minutes and actually 39 seconds as of right now. There's a good number of people already in there for this match. Man, oh, man. And, 72 uh, players. Yeah, well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, guys. But, yep, you can pop in there and join it. Um, the other thing that we wanted to tell you about before this gets started is uh, who we see uh, winning these matches today. So, here we got this first match, Chess Bras versus Blitzstream, and we both predicted the Chess Bras to take this first Correct. one. You guys play, I mean, you, you, you guys being the pawn grabbers, you guys play against the Chess Bras, right? So... Absolutely. They're you monsters. Faces, guys, okay? before. They are no, I mean, a force to be reckoned with. The yeah. force is very strong over there in the Brock land. So it's uh, it's very, very strong with them. I never played Blitzstream. I never played anything about Blitzstream, but I do know I played Kevin Bordy, who is a monster. He's yeah. a monster. I also see him play Hanson all the time, too. So it's going to be an interesting matchup. Interesting. I just saw them both play or uh, 
just Bordy. I saw Bordy play yesterday in Arena Kings and was uh, playing very, very good. So um, we'll just see what happens, man. I'm excited to see, but I know Chess Bros is going to win that one. They yeah. don't take that one out. Yeah. Now in the knockout battle, neither of us see the Chess Bros taking that one. Um, I've got uh, Jan Ludwig Hammer winning that one for the uh, for the Gnomes. And you've got uh, Andrew Tang for the Blizzard. Yes, and I think the Blizzard are going to take that one easily just because uh, Andrew Tang is uh, 3,000 on everything. So <laughs> it's just going to be um, it's going to be simple. I just think you know, Blizzard is just going to take it easily. 3,000 is a good place to be um, for sure. We'll see. We'll see whether those like online three thousands are more or less important than you know the the FIDE twenty six hundreds that he's going to have to face to get there. And <laughs> yeah, and then we got uh, Gnomes versus Blizzard. I uh, will be our our match after that, which will be which will be watching after the knockout. So that'll be a second opportunity for you guys to play. As James was saying, you could join a second fan club and play in that one too. And uh, Gnomes and Blizzard are both super popular teams, but. Uh, I figured the Gnomes fan club was bigger, so until I see how they actually play, I just go with whichever club has the bigger team. I I, I completely agree with that. Actually, uh, the the bigger team is um, actually as of uh, let me see, I have the total fan growth right now. Actually, looking at Chess Bros in the last I don't know if this is week or month. I mean, it has to be plus five hundred and thirty one fans. Yeah. For for uh, the Chess Bros which is huge. I mean, that's just a huge swing already on top of being a strong pick. So, uh, you know, it's all about you guys again, you know, fans, make sure you go and actually get into these teams, get into the teams and actually uh, play the games so you guys can represent. Yeah. And then uh, playoff bound. I mean, I personally, I don't think I know what's going to happen until I've seen the first week. Then I'll feel better about my predictions for weeks two and three, but uh, playoff bound, I went with the two teams that have the biggest fan clubs so far in Group D, and that's the Gnomes and the Chess Bras. And uh, you were on board. Did you have a different reason for that or, or similar kind of thinking? I'm sorry, what did you say? I said, uh, for, I said for the teams that would make the playoffs, I went with the Gnomes and Chess Bras for now just because they had the bigger fan clubs. Uh, Gnomes and Chess Bros, honestly, that is correct. And with that, I, I just believe that because they do have the bigger fan clubs, it's going to come through, which means they have more and more uh, players for each team. So it's going to give them, for instance, like the Wizards. The Wizards like just blew it out of water, but they also had a very nice fan club as well. So it was uh, it, it's really up in the air, honestly. <laughs> really up in the air because I, I really thought last week um, – like the Wizards was going to take it, but they didn't, and they and they did, and it's just like man, anything that you think and you thought was was going to happen, it's not. It's just, it's not going to be the same. All right, let's see what's going on here. We got the match. We got the match kicking off. That's what we got. We've got the Con Blitzstream using the opening of the Minnesota Blizzards, Scandinavian. Oh, kicked off. There we go. There right we go. off the Scan bat. What? Offered a draw. Blitzstream offered a draw already. Maybe that was a mistake. <laughs> there is a draw offer. <laughs> wow. Wow. We got it. We got a pre move too. I mean, this is a ten minute game, Kev. Chill out, Kev. We got we got twenty minutes for this one. Oh man, and Kev plays this too. Oh man. All right, there we go. He heard me. He calmed down. He spent a few seconds on a move. Well, castle, queen side, okay. What's the idea here? Well, what would you I think I think White's I'm loving White's position with that bishop on F three. You do have to be careful of ninety five stuff though. Yeah, I think um I think black's preventing white from playing D four for the moment. And so they're trying to have like a good position in the center with with a lot of pressure on the D file or a lot of space. Um, maybe Black will have a chance to play E5 themselves in some cases. So, um, so it's just sort of preventing Hansen, 
Montreal chest bras. That's Hanson for anybody wondering. It's preventing Hanson from getting exactly sort of like the setup White White wants with the pawn on d4. Um, yeah. He plays knight to d4 too. He puts the knight on d4, like you said, restricting the d4 square and, and taking it for himself. So um, you got to – I wonder if a, if a maneuver like bishop to e4, knight of 6, bishop d3, just because his bishop so important, right? Mm -hmm. Like this light square bishop is uh, – I always tell a lot of my students all the time, like this bishop is aim. look at it, look at the aim, the scope on b7 is just – it's a laser sharp. That's where I want to be. So I don't want to give this bishop up like for anything. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking here there is time on the clock. Honestly, maybe bishop e4, it does – you will be behind on development. Right. Uh, he plays d3, yeah. Takes, takes, yeah. and then follow, follow up with d4. So he's playing more solid. I obviously. think the thing is, once the bishop ends up on d3 there, it's blocking the d-pawn, so you can't let the bishop on c1 out. And if you ever play pawn to c3, black could play knight f3 check and then take the bishop on d3 anyway. So Control the d3 square. Yeah, so once that bishop gets to d3, I think white's just kind of stuck for how to continue developing. So instead... Eric plays c3. He clearly wants to play d4, and I think Kevin really wants to play queen d3, so he's thinking about that, but maybe worrying about the f7 pawn. Um, Honestly, this is actually a... What's funny is like a, a variation of that same thing that we looked at, just a different move order. Uh, if this would have happened, actually the knight would have been on f6, so it actually saves the tempo for white. So he wouldn't have to move his bishop to d3 and the knight being out on f6 already, with the d3 still being a hole there. Um... Queen d3, of course, maybe f7 is hanging. So I guess he's trying to think, how do I defend f7 effectively? Which it really, e6 might be just the only move besides knight f6. But then yeah. the knight's blocking the f pawn, which is usually an issue sometimes. Yeah, as soon as he does... is going to be a develop good and be fine. As soon as he does one of those moves, he lets white play d4. And like you say, white's fine. So I think what he's really thinking is like, I just want to sack this. That's probably what he's thinking. He just wants to sack it. Play queen d3. <laughs> Give up the pawn on f7, then maybe play e5, leave that guy hanging too, just he just to be fair to all the pawns. Knight h6, or I will take it. I am that kind of guy that I will take pawn. You see the hat? Yeah. It's, it's pawn grabber. Grab, grab, grab. Yeah. Grabbing pawns. Yeah, I think that's what he's looking at. I I, I think I would. Uh, oh, he played queen d5. Yeah, he played queen d5. Queen d5. That's like the well, opposite of queen d3. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is Scandi territory for all the Scandi players out there. Shout out to John Bartholomew, you know, Blizzard there. But all of the Scandi players, this is a dream position in a way. I would say, just basically, basically saying that trading queens is lo is what they love to do a lot in the Scandi. So, yeah. Well, I guess a queen trade also is sort of like. A mature way to play this position from kev i mean i think of him as being kind of like a sack 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 kind of player like me so i'm sure he had queen mm -hmm. three on his mind but um but uh yeah queen d5 that's sort of like the responsible move that's like the move that you know his coach wants him to play it's just the responsible move yeah defend f7 play an end game if you have to kev's like man i don't want to play no end games you oh, know, that's just... me all day. Absolutely. I like attacking, sacking stuff. Tal was my favorite player. So yeah. I like that's my kind of chess. Like just, you know, in your face and hurt you. Yeah. Kind of if stuff, Tal but... if Tal would have played one G four, he would have been Kev's favorite player. But <laughs> <laughs> G four. Knight to D two. Absolutely. Have to develop here. I'm wondering where yeah. he's going from here. Is he going for the principled and like just solid easy knight F three? Or is he going with for ideas with knight to E four, maybe? I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, it seems like the knight could go to c4, e4, f3, b3, and all four would be fine. Um, even f1. Even f1's not terrible, no. Yeah. Terrible, right. I guess if he goes to f3, then black can put their bishop on d6. If he wants to be the one to play bishop f4, then he might want to put the knight on c4 or e4 to have that option of uh, trading the bishop and playing bishop f4 anyway. Hmm. I see that. I see that. I actually like the idea of knight c4, knight e3 too, which is the same thing as knight f1, knight e3. Mm -hmm. Knight c4 is just a little bit, I guess, more aggressive. It gives you the flexibility to go to e5. Bishop to e7 is very interesting. I think, uh, David, what do you think about bishop to e7 and bishop f6? I see this maneuver a lot, but instead I of bishop to e6 in one move. I had expected him just to play knight f6. 
Um, so I'm a little bit surprised to see the bishop doing this two-step. I understand, like, why he wouldn't have wanted to play bishop d6 and allow knight c4, knight e4, and then sort of maybe have to backtrack as we get a surprising g4 move out G4. of Eric. Right, right. Out of the opening. Weird. Still, right in front of his own king. Right. Doesn't even care. He uh. just said, we're doing this right now. G4. <laughs> g4 h6 and we see what happens now there's bishop f4 you develop guys you just keep developing put the knight on e5 he's playing quickly here yeah well that f7 is going to be annoying to defend so this plan of putting the knight on e5 might also get him that bishop for knight trade that's correct and then we go bishop and knight in game oh my goodness very 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 uh, instructional and educational to learn bishop yeah. and knight in game it's gonna be fun to see there we go oh there it is. here we go Bishop All right. Knight oh my goodness. So the first lesson is you don't want to play f6 for black here. It looks like the bishop's annoying, but if you play f6, then e6 becomes a problem, and all those pawns f6, g7, h6 are future targets for the bishop. So And also fine goat is very angry because he Kev says never six. So uh, yeah. he's never supposed to play f6, but that's this exceptions. When you cancel it, it's a little different. But in this case, correct, e6 is a target, and with e6 being a target. That's the last thing you want to have in an end game with open and active pieces and rooks and bishops. Not, not a thing. Yeah. H5 is interesting. What do you think about H5? Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't have been surprised by H5 like a move or two ago when Black's Rook was on H8. You know, the moment White played G4, the first thing that pops into my head is like H5. You know, sure, let's open up your king if that's what you're down for. Yeah. Um. But uh, But without the rook on H8, I don't know how big of an impact this move has now, h5. Uh, h5 is uh, not a move. I was For me, it's just not a move. h5, I didn't think, was a very, very... Um, I wasn't scared of it at all. I can always take back on g4, and it, opening the file could even help me or even force you to kind of play f6 because g7 is a little weak, and then I can take the h file. So I think yeah. there's problems with this h5 move. Um, kind of just sitting and waiting. I think a better move might have been like maybe king to d7. Why? Just a waiting move. That puts the king closer to the center, or like b6 or b5, anything else than h5. Because well, white's just improving. You have to improve your. If you have nothing else to do, you have to improve your position, and white is doing a very good job at that. Yeah, I was expecting that. Like the first thing that uh, Bordy would do once he defended g7 would be to challenge the bishop on e5 with his knight, like knight either c6, knight c6, c6 or knight g6, right? Just yeah. sort of. Yeah. And he didn't, and he hasn't done it. You know, it's been like three moves. So that, that I guess is a small surprise to me, but there it is now. Knight g6, bishop g3. Maybe you can play h4 now to at least maybe stop some of this. What can we just take on h5? Is that a, is that a possibility? It is a possibility, but is it realistic? Do we need to do it? I think he's contemplating it actually. Oh no, it's actually by so Rook h8, bishop g3, rook h8, and now yeah. takes, takes. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. This is weird kind of call this. It's it's still yeah. a lot of play left, to say the least. It's yeah. a lot of play left. For now, I think for now I think black's okay. Um, you know, rook f three, rookie three coming. It doesn't show that Eric has any like overwhelming plan for white. I um, think his next plan is f four, but other than that, mm -hmm. yeah, what else do you have? You just have F three. Yeah. This F three gives the bishop just a little more room. Yeah. F3, and all right, cool. Prepare yourself for the next 30 moves. Yeah. Um, there could be a plan with like B4, A4, and B5, but the rook on D5 is pretty good against that plan, sort strong. of covering that whole area. So it's a very strong game here from from uh, Kevin Bordy playing yeah. for Can. I'm impressed now. He's, he's, uh, he's doing this pretty well. Mm-hmm. He's extremely strong, very underrated yeah. player. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, I can't, I can't imagine he's having too much fun sitting around in an end game with nothing to attack. But he's, uh, he's playing all those responsible moves, so his, uh, his coach will be happy. Yeah. Oh man, the word of today, responsible. Yeah, responsible. Because you know, often in chess, you're like, I know I should do this move, but I don't want to do it, right? And you just do all something right. else. But uh, today, he's doing what he's got to do. Keeping up just fine, and his team has a small has a small lead here in the match. Uh, so that's uh, right now. that's a little bit unexpected. 
I think, at least by you and me, maybe maybe somebody else knew this, but uh, but the con Blitzstream it's opening up a small six. lead. Yeah. Still That's, time. Yeah, no, no. I mean, it's not decisive or anything, but but it's good. I mean, most people thought that Montreal would be would be pretty big uh, favorites in this match. Rook takes c5, rook takes c5, he's hitting h5. So h5 is the best way to attack. Of course, you gotta, yep, yep, trade, trade. Okay. He just wants to play so, rook d5 himself, yeah. And trade everything off, I'm assuming, yeah. Now this rook's gonna to switch to h1, though. Rook e1, rook h1, that's what's coming. He would have liked to do this leaving his pawn on h5 and not trading on g4, but I think he was worried last move that he, he played rook d5 before h takes g4. White could trade on d5 and take the pawn on h5, and he couldn't really get it back. I like the fact so. that his bishop is slightly... Well, honestly, actually, and looking at this, learning something from this game is when he... It, you know, let's say he allows rook takes e5 for whatever reason. The bishop is, like, terrible. Like, it's just so bad versus this knight. But also his yeah. king is much closer to the center than black's king. So I think white still has some type of slight advantage. Yeah. But I think uh, his bishop is absolutely terrible. So it's a very interesting end game here. Very yeah, he's definitely got to keep the rook to show much of an advantage. Like if white plays f4, f5 here or something to trade rooks and not get his bishop totally blocked, I still think his advantage disappears just off that rook trade. So I would say rook e1 to h1 yeah. is obvious. And I'm surprised that Eric's thinking about this. There must be some more details going on here. There must be something else on right. his Rick mind. One, Rick H1 is a nice plan, too, by the way. So, saying hi to the chat, actually, looking over here. Says, uh, hi, all. What's up, Sharkima? Armenia Eagles. Hi, dear friends. Canty and I am Pruis. Yeah. Hello, hello. hello. That's Artok in the chat. Uh, his, Artok. his Eagles up, played the last three weeks. Division C. Ended in a tie for third place. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And so uh, says, lines. That's funny. Oh, it says uh, after F5, um, Artax says after F5, Bishop is fantastic. He's correct. Armenian Eagles, the Eagles pushing tight over here. F5 is a, actually might be, and that might be what he's thinking about, David. What do you think about F5? I mean, I, I, I think it gives up most of White's advantage if they have one. I think if White has an advantage, it's got to be playing with the Rook and Bishop against Rook and Knight. Um, those are considered to slightly coordinate better. Just like the queen and knight is supposed to coordinate a little bit better than the queen and bishop. Right. And I also think white has the opportunity to take the h file. Um, so, yeah. So there must be some reason he didn't like it. Maybe something like rookie one c5 was his concern. He definitely thought a long time. But if white had an advantage, it had to be the rook on the h file. So rookie Honestly, one. Honestly, and I'm a fan of that. C5. I'm a fan of that because I love, I love like, um, not trading basically in an end game like this because you you get a uh, you get more play you get more play and your it's it's more room for error for your opponent yeah f5 play as was guessed says armenian yeah. eagle our attack pushing tight big fella good job yeah 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 he got that guess but um yeah i don't really expect uh i don't expect uh kevin to to lose this end game at this point i think he trades on f5 once and then plays g6 and Probably. he's playing for honestly two results. Kind of both guys here. I think White is pushing for a win here. And uh, I mean, actually, by the way, uh Eric declined to draw twice. So yep. saying that um, hey, I don't I've never been to art school. It's not a thing that I do. So uh <laughs> draw is not a not a thing. Not a so. thing for Kit for him. Yeah, well, some people said they wanted to, you know, see the names, know who the people are. So I'm going to switch from our board for one second, and I'm going to show you guys Eric Hansen here. Username Eric Hansen, but today Chess Bras on their official account for them in Group D. And then uh, he's up against uh, Kevin Bordy here for the Blitzstream. Very, very nice pictures we got for these guys today. Beautiful, beautiful. So that's, that's who we got, Blitzstream. Less confusing because that's also his his chess.com username. In either case, and uh, look at that, look at that. He's falling for some kind of tactic. Uh oh, Bishop H6 on the board. He has jumped off the deep end of the boat here, guys. It may be over. Yeah, this I mean he just over. Just that instant suicide there with G6. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Somebody please get him. 
That hurts. That hurts. Yeah. He's going to be like, look, coach, I played the responsible way, but this is what happens when I play end games. This <laughs> Bishop versus knight. You got to know what piece you're using. What piece do I have? I have a knight. Oh, if I have a knight, then I need to make it favorable to my position, meaning probably not trade that many pawns and push <sighs> that many pawns. Even here, he had to take with the other pawn first with the G wow. pawn if he wanted to it's... sack... If you wanted to sack the knight, because now he still can't move the knight because of FG6. Correct. So he's just going to have to give that one up. And there it is. Yeah. Resignation. It's over. And another one. The Chess Bros take the first game in the two game matchup. Here's the second one. Yeah. But Kev will be happy. And, and Eric, unhappy to see where the score is going this match. It's now seven points for Khan, despite Eric's win in that game. Man. Man, oh man. Yeah. Yeah, they're 23 and a half to 16 and a half. Is that is that what you have? Is it updated? That's what I got. Perfect. That's what I got. And to 16 and a half. Nice. Shout out to all the fans playing right now. There's 107 players playing in this matchup right now. 107 players all contributing and battling it out. The score yeah. is now 19 to 26. And we uh, have a Trumpowski here as Eric thinks. Have you uh what do you play against D4, David? I play almost everything. Yeah, in every nice. in so ev every played. opening in every part of the world. Um, how, how do you face the Trumpowski? How, what was your record against it? Did you have fun? Did you like it? You know, the Trumpowski's always been a tricky one for me. Um, me too. Yeah, I uh, I've tried some different things against it, but I've never I've only faced it like once or twice in tournaments. You know, I played hundreds of blitz games and whatever. You know, in in blitz games, you can play some weird stuff. But uh, in tournaments, yeah, oh, man. not much. Have you, have, you, have you gotten it? You have you ever gotten it in a tournament? Yeah, maybe like two games in tournaments. And how did you uh, do? What's your record? I guess I I guess I won those games. For me, I uh, I lost my only Trumpowski game ever in life. I'm over the board. I lost because I didn't study the theory. Of course, I just was uncomfortable the entire time. Yeah, not understanding what to do. It's a very rough ride. I want to so. check out. I want to check out a fan here. While they're Absolutely. while they're nav navigating the opening here, I want to check out Art Vega, who's playing white. Art Vega, Art Vega playing man. white against X Chess thirty three. Oh man! And Art Vega here has chosen the Montreal Chess Bras as his team, which is good news for the Chess Bras because Art Vega has been a very productive fan over the course of the summer series. Yep. And uh, he was the uh, winner of the fan prize for Division C. So mm -hmm. congratulations to him. And he's also, yeah, he's also a streamer too. He should be streaming, so go follow him. Exactly, he's um, been playing he's and streaming the entire time. And look at his rating. I've analyzed his games on a lot of the series games here. Yeah, and something happened. It was a draw already. Yeah, draw already. Wow. There was a queen with only two squares to go to. Um, the draw though. Yeah. What? Uh, oh man, a second Trumpowski. Another Trumpowski today. <laughs> Today's word of the day, guys, just go outside and say Trumpowski as maybe, loud as you can. Maybe that's like a con thing, right? Because X Chess is on con and Blitzstream is on con. Maybe it's like a like a team opening. Do you do pawn grabbers have anything like that? Like a team approved <laughs> opening? Team opening? I would say uh, we had, let me see. Oh, that's a good question. It had to be, no, but it wasn't a, it wasn't a, a uh, gosh, it was like D4. I have to remember. It had come to me. But I was like, it's the same thing over and over. Yeah. What is Art Vega's Twitch name? It's I think it's just Art Vega. Yeah, Art I think Vegas. so too. So anyway, um he's you know, he's been playing off in both matches, streaming, and uh, he won the he won the fan cash prize for division C. That's two hundred fifty dollars. That resets with each new division. So as of today, there's no leader for the fan prize for division D. You guys sure. have an open shot at it. You know, and you don't How even have you to get it, guys? What's that? No, how would you get it, David? How would I get it? How would you get it? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, maybe you don't even have to play, but you got to be active online about the about the league. So you could be streaming. You could be publishing blogs about it. You could be talking it up on Twitter, getting your friends to join. But uh, playing's the most fun way. <laughs> yeah, playing's the most way. Playing's the most fun way. You can also stream it, guys, which is a huge advantage because everyone's streaming. And you can also see... Um, you know, people can come to you and hang out with you and et cetera. So it's nice. 
when you play the black side of the Trumposki, how do you feel about letting white trade the bishop on f6 like uh like x chess did here i mean just as soon as he got the opportunity just rushed to trade his bishop for that knight and uh i think it just creates a structure that people who play the Trumposki are familiar with and people who don't play the Trumposki are unfamiliar with Mm, I am not a fan. Actually, uh, I see you in the chat bar, Challenger and Sharkima. I turned it up a little bit. Let me know how that is for you guys. Maybe that's uh, they say I'm a little, a little low. Yeah, a little low. So it looks it might pretty good on my end. Pretty good on your end. So I just turned it up a little bit on on my end. Cool. Let me see if there's anything else I can do here. Still a little more. They say in the chat here. They just want a little bit more. No matter what you give them, James, they're going to want a little <laughs> bit more after that, too. They always want a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. Somebody else is saying it's good for them. Good Some, for me. Okay. Somebody so doing the nay nay. <laughs> Is down with that sound. Okay. All right. We'll keep yeah. it here then. So we're good. We're good. Um, so, and now I'm there's not been... a fan of the Trumpowski, bro. Yeah. Really not. It's just like it's, it's like scary to you, right? When you get into that yeah. thing. Well, not anymore. I, I remember I have well, nowadays. It's a big thing about being good at chess is discipline. So the discipline that I chose is when I started losing Trumpowski games, and mm -hmm. you know, I just started studying it harder. I'm like, you know what? I've lost. Now I'm gonna put in two hours right now and just no no more chess today i'm just gonna put in two hours on a trump house right now so uh, it's a discipline that i use because it was annoying to be lost and not knowing what to do or ideas or themes how about you know? night f how about knight f2 here for eric hansen he's got to have his eye on that you said knight knight h2 knight takes f2 i was thinking, oh, knight I was thinking we might have an explosive moment but uh he still found a way to target f2 just a little less explosive Probably more responsible once again. Uh, knight takes f2 would have been nice. Yeah. Let me say responsible. Responsible word of the day. Yeah. Bishop g3, we have c5 on the board. Mm. Yikes. I mean, this is uh, interesting from for both sides, honestly, to say the least. I like black's activity, though. Activity is huge. Yeah. Huge. Yeah, Black's got a great amount of space and good squares for the pieces. White wants to somehow, like, castle queen side and just say that, hey, if things explode over on the king side, even if Black's active, it's his king that's going to be in the line of fire. The issue for, for Kevin to calculate here is castle's queen side, knight takes f2. Because that looks a little bit like a pawn sack. Ah, uh, um, yeah, okay. And then he could trade on f2, then he could take on f5, maybe winning his pawn back, and Black might play bishop takes e3. Trying to start tying him up. Pawn takes e6. And it's just it's just wacky, Ooh, that position. Right, right. So. right. Wacky. I prefer white because the open lines and the brook files and stuff. But mm -hmm. it's still tricky. It's still tricky. And both of these guys yeah. are tacticians. So please be careful. Watch where you breathe. Yeah, because the, it's going to be uh, ridiculous in there. The bishop on e3 would be pretty strong, kind of covering g1, putting some pressure on the knight on d2. But anything could happen in that kind of position. That's pretty hard to... To calculate and to decide if you want to castle queenside or not here, like yeah, because you, you have to, to come back on that. I always tell people, um, you know, a lot of times say you gotta your king, it has to go somewhere, so it's going to go on one side of the board. And honestly, both sides are covered by black, so I think he's the dilemma here is really trying to figure out where to put his king at to connect his rooks to complete development. If that never happens. Black's going to slowly, and not even slowly, the next few moves is going to be just over. So we have knight f3, actually, hmm. is what he chose. I had just realized I had just realized before he did that, James, that he should trade on f5. It's sort of like the way my brain works sure. is like I look at one uh -huh. issue, I look at another issue, and gradually I sort of put them together and realize how they interact. But basically, Black's trying to put this counterplay pressure on f2, right? Normally, you don't take on f5 because it's helping the bishop on c8, but that bishop's already on b7. So what you want to do here for white is you just want to make that pawn trade on f5. Get rid of the pawn on g4 that's hanging. Open the g-file for your rook, right. right? And then proceed from there. So he should have thrown that in. And the knight f3 idea is still like a nice idea to put the knight on e5. But um, 
he would be better off if he traded his Jeep on first. Honestly, and then I believe that thing. I believe that same thing actually too. I think uh yeah, that a little small Jishin Zug would have been um beautiful just to open that G file up. Because now looking at the position here, the G file, the H file is open, but it's it's not realistic that he's ever gonna get anything going on the H file. Especially after a move like H6, which is just blocking locking down everything here. Queen G5 is nice just because it stops his castle, keeps his king in the center, and yeah. also threatening E3. So it's like it's too many threats here. And they always say, uh, what is it, the principal two weaknesses? That's number mm -hmm. one, you know, having two weaknesses. And then number two, it's hard to make good moves in a bad position. Or when you're being attacked, when you're being, you know, they're swinging at you, it's hard to, you know, uh, duck every single shot. Yeah. Well, this move, Rook H2, is a good move as far as covering the weakness on F2 and getting off of the bishop on B7, so he might be able to deal with moves like E3 a little bit better. The move Correct. that White wanted to play last move was Queen D2 um, to, you know, trade queens and uh, because his king can't castle, right? And then play the good knight against bad bishop in the endgame. That would be a fun that would be a fun one for White to run back. But okay. the problem is after Queen D2, King D2... Black has either e3 check to trade bishop for rook, which I don't even recommend. Stronger as rook takes f2 check. Just getting into the second rank and starting to grab all those pawns. Yeah, that was actually very, very, uh, very, very good in um, insight there, especially about uh, giving up the bishop for the rook. Actually, rook takes f2 probably um, actually is stronger based off of the fact that giving up that bishop and he grabs a few pawns, you might actually still lose this game as black being up in exchange. It could be pawns tough. Are very strong could be tough because yeah. then the white pawn structure is solid and you're playing against that amazing knight on e5, right? So yeah, better is just to grab some pawns and eventually white's going to collapse. Correct. Nothing wrong with grabbing pawns. My hat is a perfect example. Yeah. Okay, right. so... Um, They're telling us that Art Vega's got a good match, position. Yeah, he has. Two, There's an match interesting way four to points. Nice. Oh my goodness four point match that is close that is some close shout out to metal eagle in the chat how do you guys feel about playing against the stonewall dutch as white well actually i play the stonewall dutch i play e4 big fella so that's never a thing i ever face in life <laughs> e4 for life but um have a guy uh, uh david actually on the other hand may have some insight on that yeah, I mean, I, I like playing against the Stonewall Dutch. I feel like there's a pretty obvious weakness on E5. There's some there's some plans to uh, increase White's positional advantage that feel kind of like a paint by numbers game to me. Like you just sort of you just sort of do it. You know what you're doing. It's pretty easy. So uh, yeah, I, I love it when people just hand me a positional opening straight, a positional advantage straight out of the opening. You know. If they want to play like Sveshnikov and give me the d5 square, if they want to play Stonewall, give me the e5 square. It just feels very straightforward to me, and I'm like the whole game. I'm just confident taking them apart. <laughs> taking them apart, yeah. as he says, the monster. What a beast! What a beast! Rook yeah. f5. So Rook f5 is on the board here, and uh, time wise, uh, he's doing. Bordy's doing great, great here, yeah. time wise. Yeah, yeah. But uh, his position is saying not otherwise, but it is some tough stuff to do. And there we go. We have queen d2 on the board. He's finally able to do so. So what would you do yeah. here, David? Is it a trade or what? what do we otherwise, his king's a problem. So basically, I wonder if black's thinking about like the e3 pawn sack to open their bishop. But I, I don't see any good move for black in, in response to this just yet. Um, So we'll see what we'll see what Eric's got up his sleeve. I mean, he's he's a GM. He's uh he's a step or two above above me here but um here i'm expecting white to play like king e3 and yeah me too and then maybe h5 there's even knight takes g4 coming so oh, was. I, was. I i don't know it feels like uh, it could be tough for eric in Isn't this end game rook takes rook f3 king yeah that's just not a move rook f3 is just not a move or rook yeah, takes no, e5 yeah. so I mean, what about a five? You play a but sack, and you're still stuck with this bad bishop on b seven. So, I this this is a. Uh, I mean, on h five, he wants to play rook h one, and then pawn's gone. Look like maybe not. Oh, he does because f two is hanging. So he right. can. Oh, but then he has mate on h eight though. Right. So it's going to be tricky. He's going to have to figure <laughs> out. Oh, this is what we came to see, guys. This is God, what you came to see right here. It's about to get real. He might have g6, though, David. After right. knight takes g6, rook f3, didn't take on f2. Mm -hmm. After king e1, bishop a6, but he has king e1. 
But the thing about g6 is if the white rook is still on h2, white can take on g6 with the knight, and f2 is not yet hanging. Then bring the knight right. back and stuff. So right. we'll see. We'll see what Eric's got in mind. He got something in, in, up his sleeve here, guys. It's about to get real. Pay attention. It's two minutes on the clock, by the way, for the man here. Or two and some change. Yeah. Right under three. If he spends some serious time on this move, it means he's in trouble. I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> if he's yeah. spending some time, it means he's in trouble. <laughs> man man without a plan. <laughs> right. That's a terrible thing. And also, it was made on the back rank, guys, if you didn't know. So... Yeah. You have to know Rick H eight is mate. Yeah. Rick H eight is mate. So I'm just gonna draw it for them for a second to make it really clear. See, that's the problem. White's really threatening to take the H five pawn. So Black's really got to come up with something here. Be a savage. Yeah, Sharkima. I mean, if I guess I should say Sharkima, if uh, if Hansen just like loses this this game here with a move like Rook takes knight. Then I rescind. Then I rescind my comment about him being a step or two above. <laughs> if he just loses no. like nothing, then you know. Oh, but this is I sweet though. This is sweet. So I did remember I was talking about sac exchange sacrifice. I was yeah. like, man, I could take the knight, but now g6 is actually solid. So it makes this a little different. But yeah. the problem is the d file is wide open. So if you let that d file get open, it it's over. Like it could be bad. It well, he's really he's gonna open his bishop with e3. He's gonna try and get the g3 pawn with his rook, and then he's got sort of a mass of pawns on the king side to play with as well. So both I his mean, pieces are gonna be active, and yeah. Kev's gonna have to show some more uh, some more attentive endgame play than in the first game if he wants this one to work out. Correct, and he does have uh, e3 followed by a rook takes g3, and king to d2 is right because king e2 after you take on g3, the bishop can go to f3 if rook to d1. So that will but be on king a, uh, e2, the king was defending f2. Now e3 is like checks, so he's got no choice. Uh, uh, if he played if true. he played king e2, then on e3, he could just play a move like rook to d1, I think. Right now, actually, you know, immediately. Yeah, just Bishop activate that rook and not yeah. trade on, yeah. on e3. That actually could be a thing, actually. Yeah, g3 would still fall, but at least the rook's active. Yeah, it would for take white. an extra oh. move, basically, for black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, king e2 actually was correct. That makes sense. So there it is. The check. Three check. Takes there, it. There Rook takes g3. Mm -hmm. By the way, if this ends in a draw, let's say uh, Blitzstream wins this game. Let's say Kevin Bordy wins this game. Yeah. What uh? How, what's the odds for Bullet? What do you think? Who's who's taking the Bullet? Well, match? they won't be playing Bullet yet. That'll be in the knockout phase. Ah, that's correct. For now, correct. it's just that's a matter correct. of the team Only club. Live club. Right. Khan Tends is up to. five games right correct. now. Looks like there's about five or six games still going. 48-43. Man, it's still unbelievable how many points the Wizards got last week. I mean, or even just period. Yeah. 79 and a half. I mean, looking at that, it's 48 to 43, and it's like they had 79 and a half points. It's unreal. Rook, Rook H3. F1, and now Rook H3 quickly. H3. So Eric's wow. recognized the situation That's that sweet. he needs to like look ahead and, and put some pressure on here. Man, um, and look at this, guys. I mean, this is huge. This is like in game one on one. If he takes the rook, like you cannot stop that that pawn from queening. It's That's coming strong. to h2. You have to play rook f2. Black plays g5, and you can't no, you stop can that pawn from getting to g3. You can play bishop g2. Ah, that's another way too, huh? And then h2, h1, queen. Ouch. Anyway, I mean that's strong. That's nasty yeah. right there. Rook h3, and then. How you how do you stop the pass pawn? You don't. G three and G two is automatic. I'm getting those no matter what you do here. It's just like I think he's winning now. I think he's straight up winning. Rook H three was like a uh one of the quiet moves that went on the board. Just like, oh, I'm just gonna play here. And now yeah. I'm plus five. How did you even do that? Where did that come from? I'm plus five now. Yeah, Rook takes E five. All right. Eric's confirmed that he's a step above, right? Maybe a couple. Yeah. Rook takes E five. That was nice. Yeah, that was nice. Really hard to handle for White. The aftermath oh, of that. Yeah. If White even had a way to handle it, but uh, he definitely turned things around. Yeah, that was beautiful. Alex sixteen Co says hi, folks. New to Twitch Ooh. here. Thanks for your commentary. Do the I results think... of the fan club games affect the end result? Cheers. I think Khan just uh, just did it, man. I think I, they just added two points. They got to fifty one. Points. Oh, yeah, I think it. that clinches the match for them. Yep, and uh, kind of turns like the the pre the pre division D predictions on their heads, right? Because uh, 
A Ooh, lot of people yeah, thought Cod had, had the smallest of the four that. fan clubs, but uh, in fact, Montreal had the biggest growth this this week or this month or whatever, and Con had the smallest. So it's like it's a huge fan upset. Yeah, that's huge. Right, that is huge for the for the Blitzstream here. I mean, literally huge. Like fifty one forty six. They chess bras were just like, we're going to win this. It's over. Yeah, and they they losing the match here. It's pretty yeah. tough. But that's why it's a mix up. You never know what's gonna happen after last week. I was like, I don't know what's gonna happen. I have no idea. Even like you know, from um, I think it was with the Capybaras came back from so far. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my goodness, this is it's anybody's match. It's anybody's match. And now, if we look at this, Black's got a bishop and three connected pass pawns against a rook. So even if he weren't like quickly converting it, he'd be converting it in the you know in the long term. This is a mm -hmm. pretty safe situation for eric here it just seems like easily winning for him how's art vega doing how is he doing actually he's art got Vega's a rook against the knight um and yeah he's up oh no yeah he's up rook first yeah. tonight yep man he so he's rook. he's really played a model game here against the uh against the tromposki maybe something for something for, for the others to study the to see here Right, and now he's going to double the rooks. They always say a uh, rook on a seventh in my system from Aaron Nims, which is very nice to have a rook on a seventh. You should refrain from having one there from your opponent, right? But yeah. here um, he's trying to eventually get his, his rook, both of the rooks doubled on the D file, and that will be lights out. Knight B3 is the best move here, actually. Yep, mm -hmm. knight B3. And now I'm trying to figure out what to do with black. Maybe he'll rook to C3 and then rook C4 and then rook C2. Finally, <laughs> it's going to take a while, but you know where you're going, right? You know where you're going, right? Rook C3, Rook C2. Yeah. Rook C3, Rook C4, Rook C2. That's like, that's, that's exactly how I feel, James, about the, uh, about the Stonewall that they were asking about. You know, I know where I'm going. It's very comforting yeah. when you know where you're headed. Yeah. You're like, you're headed for a knight on E5 and then, mm -hmm. you know, trade one or two pieces, then make a pawn break with F3, E4. And you got Honestly, it. David good. made a very good point there, guys. That was like a quick lesson. It just went right over your head. That's okay. I'll bring it back for you, actually. What that is, <laughs> is a lot of times it's like it's preparation, themes, themes and ideas is what you be you should be studying. I already know what to do no matter what because I know the idea of this opening. So it's good to know ideas and themes. That is not a move, and we find Rook to be two winning on the oh, spot. Oh, man. So, so Bordy has resigned this endgame, but we've got a comment in chat that I want to go check on. They're saying that after rook to h3, Kevin could have traded the rook and then played king d3 in order to uh, block the diagonal with pawn e4. Oh, strong. In case of h2. No, but bishop g2 still wins. But it bishop g2 wins. again, like Canty said before. It still wins. Yeah. Gets on the other side before that pawn can block him out, and then the h pawn's unstoppable. So, yeah, so, so Eric had everything covered there, man. Rook takes e5. That's a good lesson, too. Pawn Wait, takes e5, takes e5 rook f3 check. King d2 is probably like the lose, like a losing move. I mean, the king's walking away from where black's about to make all the pass pawns. That's no bueno. Can't, can't do Unbelievable. that. Unbelievable. Yeah, learned some in-game something here. And it, it just plan-wise, that's why it's good. When you get better at this game, you start learning plans more. And the plans there, he just realized, what you know, what's my imbalance? I have to break up this f pawn so I can get the g pawn to connect my pass pawns beautiful and just masterpiece of understanding chess and yeah. not just looking for moves and i'm going to show something important real quick the difference between king e2 and king d2 king e2 e3 from black there's even an important idea for white rook takes h5 maybe leaving f2 hanging i mean i don't oh, know if you looked at it nice. low on time but this move is this move is potentially interesting because you're trying to quickly get rook h8. You're dealing with some of those pawns on the king side. If rook f2 check winning your rook with the bishop, you actually have king takes e3 and you're hitting that rook. So he that doesn't was have, actually really nice. Doesn't have time David, to take on really h1. That's a good plan, actually. Yeah. Rook takes h5 is strong because it's it's kind of like laughing in the face of danger. Right. So, and, and often you need, often you need that when your opponent's trying to kill you. You have to just sort of like be willing to calculate some tricky variations and walk like right along the knife's edge. Yikes. Yikes. I said Eric said he planned Bishop A6 after King E2, says GR2. Mm -hmm. Bishop A6, King E2. Yeah. Oh, yikes. Because then Pawn takes F2 afterwards. Dang. Yeah, he had that all planned out. Yikes. How is that even possible? Yeah, no, on is. King E2, he could have played Bishop A6 first. Yeah. 
as well. Uh, King yeah, comes back to sense. E1, then maybe E3 there. But in any case, it I think it had to be a better defense to keep the king closer to this situation on the king side here. But it looks quite strong for Eric. I mean, it looks quite strong. I guess people know what he was planning because he's streaming while he's playing these games. Um, right. And one really important thing that we actually didn't go over at the top of the show because there's so much to say. But um, of the people playing today, uh, three of them are the managers of their teams, right? Like Jan Ludwig Hammer is the manager of the Gnomes. Eric Hansen, obviously Mr. Chessbra. And uh, Kevin Bordee, I mean, his name is Blitzstream, the Con Blitzstream. That's his team. So we got three managers playing out of four. We got three people streaming as well as they play these matches. So you can see, you can see what they're thinking about it. If you want to hear the step above insight, you can watch. Uh, you can watch Eric's comments on his own games. Also, Kevin Bordy is the only one that's not a GM in this section. The other three are GMs playing for the team, and. Kevin Bordy is not, but he plays like yeah. one. Very strong. So it's a four-point match right now, and I'm struggling to find which game is still going. It looks like this will be... Oh, there's a few, it looks like. One, two. Oh, Should wait, be... that's updating. I think I found one. I think we found one. We got Red Bunny Bun against Chu P. That's the last one I see. Chu P is like a little kid's character in France. Chu P. Where is that at? Is that towards the bottom? Oh, here. I found it. 40 seconds on the clock here. Yeah, that's not a lot of time for them to still have all the pieces on the board. And, uh, <laughs> right. they did it. What did they do? You know, it's going to be a thrilling finish here. Wow, and the chess bros are only behind by three points. My lord, this was close. Mm. But I think this that's is the tough. only game, so they can't they can't close it up. But yeah, there's no way they can tie this up with this being the only game. Knight to h5 from T Chupi. I have no idea what his next move is. Knight to a2. Well, there's a shock. Yeah, very shocking. Very shocking. With the big retreat. He's, oh, that is not a move. No, it is. No, it's not. It's not. What is he doing? Knight f4 check, but I just step out the way. I, it's not a move. It is not a move. Yeah, That's a I mean. On b4, big fella. Thank you. Well, he's he wants to take the rook on c1 at oh. the end, but maybe white could have played rook takes c7 and after he re recaptures play knight takes b4 and be up a piece i don't know i mean there's only a few seconds here to to figure this stuff there is a piece hanging oh but not rookie, rookie takes... two he's got rookie two man oh big fella oh. jumped off the deep end somebody get him it's over oh Chupi. Two, knight f4. yeah before it worked before Chupi he landed his cheapo yeah. <laughs> That's what he wanted. Knight d3, that's the best move. It's still compensation, two knights and a rook versus queen bishop. But it's tough It's tough to coordinate the two knights with it. It's the toughest. Knight yeah. d3, yeah, and maybe something like queen g5 just to hit the g-pawn or the b-pawn. He's going to look for some more aggressive stuff, man. He's a very aggressive player, but his bishop's really limited, actually, by white's pawn structure. So, I mean, on a uh, move like rook c7. Seven. That could be out. How do you defend the bishop? I don't know, Pawns man. He's first. just... He's just looking for more tactics, more cheapos. Over. Bishop AA, Rook C8, and I'm like hitting. I get another piece. Yeah. He had to take it. Pawn takes, takes. This is more than enough compensation. Oh for man, now. can you imagine allowing Rook takes E2 and then living to win the game? That would be. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something. Livid. Livid. They uh, had to take that. I don't think I've been hit by too many moves like Rook takes E2 and live to to tell the tale. To tell about it, right? Uh, White's got a lot of pieces. Yeah, keep everything defending itself. That's a good idea because this guy wants to hit you with the tactic. He's only that's got right. one queen left oh, to do it. Nice. So, oh, that's a check. Out of come the around way. to the G2. So well, yeah, no. G2 is the best move. B4 pass pawns must be pushed. I'm out of the way. Push it again after he takes the pawn. Nothing else to do. King C3. Step out of the way. Push the pawn. Push the pawn through. Rook behind the pawn. Rook's behind the pawns. That's not a move. 
<laughs> if you don't like something, it's just not a move, huh? It's just not a move. It's not, not a move. move. Well, this pawn Rook is uh, queening. I can tell you that. White's B6, got, B7, Rook A8. White's got three pieces with which to uh, go after these squares. And uh, again, we got one of these paint by numbers, one of these situations where you know where you're going. That pawn's going mm. to B8. Every piece just needs to one at a time take the square away. 52.5 to 53.5. Is that the final score? Or is there what? still a game going? That's the score? Is it a draw? Wow. Was that, that was is there a still red, a game red going somewhere? 53.5, 53.5. Where is this last game? What's happening? Oh, it's right here. Right here. I'm you gonna, found I it? found it. It's Mzungi. Oh, it's over. It's over. Mzungi won, which means the chess bras win. The oh, chess bras win? God. Are you kidding me? The chess bras pulled it out. <laughs> the big fellas in the chat. Oh, my goodness. Put it in the air. Let's go. Wow. There were so many games going. I couldn't that. find the last one or two that. games. I didn't even realize they had a chance. They had a chance, guys. The chess bras pulled it out of nowhere for the boys. That was crazy. My bracket still stays correct here right now. No, uh, wait. That was crazy. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I don't know where they pulled those games out from, James. Do you do you think those games were even going, or they just like they're just like you know we what? need to add a so couple points in the code? It was. I didn't think it was a game. I was like, oh, but maybe it's not refreshed. But I did see when I was scrolling through, and I was like, that looks like another one. I was like, no, nah, it's probably not right, and it was the right one. So it, it was a thing. That's crazy. Very well, this nice. was huge. I mean, this was a fifty-plus board match. I mean, and that's yeah, the I thing that Division D brings that. That um that you know divisions A and B did not have matches of this size. I mean St. Louis and Chengdu are final four teams with a lot of fans, but mm. the streaming teams have even more fans. You know, so like Chess Bras and Khan, man, a taste of Division D, fifty plus boards, and uh, a nail biter that we didn't get to see the last nails getting bitten. Jeez, right, fifty four and a half points, like to one point game, one yeah. point. Wow, and they win. And they, they won like win. the last four or five games there. It was like fifty three point five to fifty point five for sure. That's right. They had it. It was actually the biggest lead was like 11, 11 points, twelve points was the biggest lead for Blitzstream. And out of nowhere, they just turned it around. And that's how it is in chess too. <laughs> Make sure never resign, right? Never resign. Oh man, it's funny. Yeah, especially in team events, man. You resign in a team event. That's not. That's not very cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's for the team. This is for the team. That's pretty cool there. All right. So, knockout. Um, I believe that the knockout begins at 10.10. 10. That's in 10 minutes. Sweet. So, so um, that means that we got... Um, we got to take probably a 90 second break, run a short, run a short ad for you guys, then come back and preview that knockout. All right. So we're going to, we're going to go over the four players who are playing in the knockout, tell you what to expect. Um, when we come right back after this, see you in a bit.
Welcome back, everybody. We got three minutes and a half till the knockout hits. That's right. Knockout time. They're going to be swinging. It's time to go. This music gives me anxiety. This music pumps me up. Yep, that's right. Get hype in the chat, guys. I hope you're enjoying yourself. We're excited. You're excited. It's about you. It's the Pro Chess Summer Series. So let's do this, man. Knockout's about to start soon. All right, let's check out the four players we got. The seating here is based on fan club growth. So like uh, like James told you from the top of the show, the Chess Bras had the 500-plus fans added to their club most recently. So they got the first seed here in the knockout battle. And the first seed is huge. I mean, because these knockouts are not two-game knockouts. They're one-game knockouts. You play a 15-2, and two, and if you've got more fans, you just get white. That's it. <laughs> Nothing for the other guy to do about it. Can anyone guess who has the second best fan in the chat? Who has the second best out of this group right here? Fan club. If you guys can read the little white numbers, you can you can definitely get that one. <laughs> <laughs> so the bracket right. is the bracket is number one against number four. Eric Hansen and Kevin Bordy, you just saw them like uh, throw down twice with Hansen prevailing in two end games. Um, so he'll have White against Kevin. Uh, so no Trompowski, I'm guessing. And uh, in the other side of the bracket, we'll have Jan Ludwig Hammer against Andrew Tang, the Penguin Grandmaster. And uh, the winner of each of those knockouts will face each other for first place in the whole knockout. The losers will face each other for third place. There's three points to the winner and $100, two points to second, one point to third. Nothing for the guy in fourth place. No money, no points, no honor, nada. Nothing. You don't want to be so last. you got to bring your game. Yeah, it's just it's, it's either you're first or you know, you, yeah. you don't win. That's just how it is. But let's go. It's going to be exciting. Let's get into these knockout battles. It starts in, what, a minute or so? Yeah. About a minute. Um, looking at this real quick, I've got stats on all four of these guys. Their performance in the Pro Chess League to date. Um, Eric Hansen, he's rated he's rated like 26, 10, 20 or so normally. And you can see that his Pro Chess League performance for all his uh, chess bra fame, his performance is always 30, 40 points below that. So yeah, I mean, super strong, like ridiculous. We all know how strong these guys are. I mean, look at the ratings there. This is yeah. something you dream to have in a performance ratings. And it says a lot because they're playing against the strongest on the planet. So to have these ratings yeah. is always uh, um, a, a spectacular performance from everyone. Yeah. So Hanson, I wonder if, you know, maybe he feels a little bit of pressure instead of hype from having so many fans because... You know, for the chess bras, he's he's performed a step or two below where he wants to be for their team, and uh, you know he'll he'll want to use that top seed and that. I know I know Eric's a guy who loves to play white. I know this for sure, loves to play white. So he'll have to use that advantage to try and take the knockout today. Um, then we've got Jan Ludwig Hammer. He's got the highest performance rating in the Pro Chess League of these four guys: twenty six thirty nine this this year and twenty seven hundred last year. Um. So yeah, I hammer mean, brings the hammer. He really does. He's a very uh, underrated, honestly. Uh, but I mean, if you see the rating, it's overrated. It's not overrated, but he's higher rated, and it's uh, he's a very like not talked about as much. But he's uh, as as you see, his last name is Hammer. So yeah. there's a lot that he brings to this game. Definitely pay attention, and you have to be on your A game when you playing the Hammer Man. All right, and here they come. Matches are starting. Let's get the board up here. We got Hansen with white. Kicking here we things go. off, E4. All right. E4. And D5, back to the Scandi. Back the to the, the Scandi. Scandi. The land of the Scandi. And over here. We got uh, Jan Ludwig Hammer playing the Catalan. That's definitely a hammer opening. He loves yeah. that. The Catalan. He loves that. That's hammer. For sure. I'm actually going to hop over there and follow. Follow the gnomes and follow the blizzard. So this is uh, Andrew Tang here with Black on the Minnesota Blizzard account. 
I believe he's the only player not streaming their games live today. So, yeah. We're on another wavelength here in Division D with all the players, you know, streaming, huge fan bases. Okay. All right. I have all the games up. I am ready to go. Man, yeah, this Catalan stuff, yeah, it looks some like he would play that stuff. Yeah. So Bishop to D6. Uh, have you have you ever played a Catalan, David? I'm not a cat. I'm not a D4 player ever, so it's just like a new land to me. I've played I like everything, watching. man. I've played everything. I mean, unless it's like one F3 or something like that, you know, that I, I don't do that. But All basically right. any opening with a real name, you know, that's not named after some some like animal in the jungle <laughs> or something. Any the like tiger. any 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 opening that's named after a Russian chess player, I I've, I've tried it <laughs> <laughs> or a country. <laughs> That was funny. That's yeah. Funny. But Bishop uh, D6 on the board. D6. Bishop D6, uh, Tang, I mean, I got to say this, like right off the bat, Andrew has given um, has given Jan Ludwig something to think about here, right? I mean, this guy knows his Catalan, and here on move seven, he thought for a minute and a half. So this Bishop D6 true. must be something he's just not as uh, familiar with, and that's a good sign for, for Andrew. You know, you always want your opponent to not know, to not know what they're doing too well. Right. And uh, wow, Bishop at four, that was a surprising move. But this is uh, it's actually really strong. I mean, maybe this is Catalan theory, but well, I don't know. But Bishop at four, I think, is a very strong understanding of your opening, of what you play in, and experience. All of those tied into this move I just see here. Because yeah. Bishop takes f4 as multi purpose. I mean, most people would just literally just snap this Bishop off, not even think twice about it. But the problem with sacking, with taking on f4, is that if G takes f4, the G file opens up number one. Number two is now we have a clamp on e5, so we have that square. We can follow up with e3 in a stone wall kind of position. Play knight c3, castle queen side, and storm on the king side. And you have a plan. And it's, it's crushing. I think bishop f4 was a super strong move. As you see, uh, Tang is still in the think tank right now as we're yeah. thinking. And also, black wanted to play e5. So e5 would have been a very strong move to play later on to get his light square bishop out. And uh, bishop f4 actually stops that. I think this was... This is making Tang remember, oh, yeah, he does know how to play this game. <laughs> In case he had any doubt. He's like, I'm going up against this, you know, 2600 GM. I wonder if he knows the game. Yep, 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 he does. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Uh, and then Queen E7. Now Queen E7, so he defends it. And, and more than that, I mean, he's still trying to play E5, right? I think um, I think this much was, was clear to Jan Ludwig that Knight C6, Bishop D6, Andrew's plan was to just play E5, right? Just not hold on to the C pawn, just get developed super fast, and then just play E5 no matter what. Um, so, you know, he had to figure out how is he going to try and deal with it. He's going to try and deal with, with, with Bishop F4. And Tang plays Queen E7. He's saying, hey, I'm still going to play E5. You know, I'm, I'm not going to trade yeah. on F4. That was very strong. It's a battle of understanding. When you understand chess and what the idea is, sometimes as this purpose right here, the whole game is about one thing, and that's what this is right now. Everything right now, the last few moves, are about playing the E5 the E5 move, about the E5 square. And look at that. He yeah. puts a knight on what square? Hello, class. Raise your hand. E5. There yeah. it is. There's there's no right. doubled pawn that Jan Ludwig's not willing to take on if it stops Andrew Tang from playing the freeing E5 move. He'll take any messed up structure as long as Black's stuck with his bishop on C8 and rook on A8. So he offered doubled F pawns. Now he's offering doubled E pawns. Fine, no problem. I guess it's critical to, to calculate, though. You know, bishop takes E5, pawn takes E5, knight D7, trying to just pick that pawn. And Yikes. I don't think he, he really wants to have to trade bishop so? takes C6, does he? Yeah. Oh, but he has queen before in the end. I don't know. That's interesting. That's very tactical. There's yeah. a lot going on. Like, is he going to... Would you take on C6 if bishop I takes... E5 takes and a knight D7. Are you taking on C6? I assume he or doesn't knight? want to, but then what else is he planning here, right? It's got to be the yeah, question. Right. How else do you defend E5? E5? Yeah, E5 is hanging. So you would have to take and play knight C3 because you could take on C6, but I mm -hmm. feel like you're going to be in a little bit of trouble after maybe queen B4. Black's going to throw a knight B6 first because it improves their development. And then after the queen moves somewhere, right? Like oh, C2 yeah, or something. Yeah. Then he's going to take back. Now his bishop's ready to come to like A6 or B7 or whatever. Yikes, that's a nice distance of knight b6. Knight yeah. takes. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to be easy. Yeah, it's difficult. <laughs> I love the discussion of, of the openings and the naming and Fisher in the chat there. Why doesn't Fisher have more openings named after him? 
because it would be confusing if every opening was named after him. <laughs> and then somebody else has got 960 openings named after him because he's got Fisher Random Chess. I got he has 960. How many yeah. do you got, bro? I got 960. What do you got? <laughs> I'm done. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. They want to see the bracket. Oh, yeah, good call. Let's show the bracket, shall we? <laughs> I had a yeah. scene all prepared for that, and I'm just off my game today, James. I'm off my game. It's all good. And then Saturday, we're just relaxing. Oh, he take. traded the knight, not the bishop. I know. I know. And he, of course, bishop before check. We know that's the automatic move. Now, what's the follow up? Knight to c3? Uh huh. I would think so. And then um, knight d5? That Maybe. Sacrifice? Is it even worth it? Takes. You get a lot of counterplay for knight to. Oh, yeah. I mean, all these pawn right. sacks where white gives up the g2 bishop, I, I don't even worry about sacking those pawns. I don't know about you, but like, I just be like, sure if, if you, yeah. if you think yeah, you, you want that it. knock yourself out buddy yeah. yeah it's not gonna work out for white to trade off this g2 bishop there's like Man. not a lot where it does the knight d2 knight c3 knight d2 just doesn't make sense i think knight c3 has to be bishop d2 okay so he's just like, yeah if i'm gonna trade we're gonna trade my way yeah that's interesting. So there's something he didn't like about knight d2 either. Yeah, we're going to trade my way. All right. So now he could play e4. Oh, I said, why is it W I M Eileen Martinez? <laughs> Where? Oh, my, under my name. Oh, it my goodness. <laughs> we got another We got another error on screen. <laughs> Simon. Going to fix oh, that. Man, that's funny. I'm going to fix that for you here. That's funny. I was like, what are they talking about? Yeah. Oh, look. Huh? Oh, that's what it is. Hmm. Well, thanks, guys. Well, thank you. Yeah. We'll, we'll just switch that. <clears throat> okay, do we know who you are? <laughs> <laughs> they know who you are. That's good. It's always good to that's be known. Good. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Uh, so how did the gnomes do? They, haven't, they didn't play yet. They're, they're coming up. Right. Oh, that's what's wrong. Chess one says, big fella. So, knight d5. He did go for this knight d5 idea, but it's a little bit different. And now castles. He's out of the way. Nice. And taking on d5, if you guys are asking, it's a lot of compensation you get. Taking, you know, like how David was saying, like, just giving up. You know, he'll be glad. Go ahead. You can definitely take. You can definitely capture this knight with your g2 bishop. I welcome you to do it. Because it's uh, that bishop on g2 is like a huge... It's it's everything about White's position. Everything about White's position. You even see in these fin kettle positions sometimes that you may be able to take a rook with that fin kettle bishop, but you should not. You should not because now you've given that up and you've given up the light squares or dark squares, whatever that is, and you get in a lot of trouble with that. So if you notice, you can take on d5, but just because you can take material does not mean you can act. You should take the material, and it's a lesson learned there. Also, him not taking the material keeps his bishop on c8 temporarily still bad. So. Can't see any interesting prep you are doing for upcoming OTB tourneys. Interesting, interesting prep that I will be doing. Uh, I mean, it's the same prep. I mean, I prep very hard, so my in, my prep is not usual prep. But uh, no, nothing unusual. Just the regular stuff. All right, they wanted me He's to take a turn. They wanted me to take a turn as a gelin, just to be fair. So okay, we're gonna do that. You're gonna mess me up like I messed you okay. up. Okay. Um, let's check in on the other game. Let's see how the other game's going, cause uh, looks like uh, looks like Eric's uh doing some some brutal stuff here. Dang. Hmm. Hmm. Check, oh, it was over. It's over. Oh, checkmate. wow. We get over there and it's over, and he just wins out. So it's made on the board as soon as we get over here. The key setup to this whole game was this rook on d6. He put that rook on d6. He's like, you could take it with any piece you want. I don't care. Whenever you do, he's going to open up his bishop on b2. 
in response. So knight d6, ed6, rook d8, queen e5, threatening mate on g7, not for the last time. Man, that's just like genius, bro. Jeez. Rook d6 was just like, take it. And Ooh. he took it. Like, he did it, too. He was like, yeah, you can have it, bro. Yeah. He literally just, I'm not going to. I mean, I guess there's not much else to do anyway. I guess Besides if he doesn't take that, it, what happens eventually? Right. What do you do mm -hmm. anyway? Because white just builds up pressure, I guess. And maybe you just never take this rook. But he then he'll get to seventh rank. That's an issue. Yeah, I mean, he could put a rook on d8, start to counter that. I don't know. That looked like that looked like a true destruction there, my friend. And uh, yeah. and he had 13 minutes left on the clock. I always thought, you know, if you're going to go Take down, at least spend some time, like, working on it, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, if you yeah, lose was, with all your time on the clock, then it's like it's like you didn't try, right? It's one of those things where the coach is yeah. like, I asked you to give 100%, not, like, 3%. 3%? Okay. All right. So, all right, so back to our interesting game here. Mm -hmm. Norway Gnomes, Jan Ludwig Hammer. Face B6. So he plays B6. B6 is actually, uh, he's going to put that bishop on B7. And here's, a, again, giving up that light, light square bishop is going to be a problem. You never want to do that. And now black just gets to develop all of his pieces. Bishop B7, and he's just sitting there. Honestly, who yeah. you who would you prefer here, David? This is looking very, very healthy for for um, for Andrew. What, um, what Jan Ludwig is trying to threaten here is the move E4, winning the knight. So he's, he's still posing a problem here for Andrew to figure out. C5 is the logical way to do that. Now the question is, you know, can you play E4, F4, F5 and stuff before Black finishes mobilizing? Because it's true, Black's found space for all their pieces. That's an excellent plan. I think that was excellent. And here's the thing, guys. Every time you play, every every single time you play, especially in the middle game when the position's like this, is the plan. You need a plan. And if you notice how David just whipped out moves in every master, they talks about moves, you whip them out like that. It's a part of a plan. And the plan here is pretty nice, as uh, E4 was actually threatening to trap the knight. So now the knight needs to move somewhere, and then after the knight moves, then um, we can continue with F4 and uh, F5 and stuff like that. Yeah, I see Bordy already won a blitz game. So, I mean, he's just he's taking out that frustration there. He just checkmated somebody on G7, just like he got checkmated on G7. Like, oh, within like 20 seconds. <laughs> within 20 seconds. He's on a rampage, so watch out, everybody, on the live server. <laughs> Um, He's mad. Yeah, so there's basically two plans for Jan Ludwig, and uh, the one that I didn't mention, but I was drawing an arrow to hopefully tune you guys into it, is the knight coming to d6 is his other possibility here, right? But he's got to do something because black's got this pawn majority and all the pieces coming out. So he had to either throw the f pawn up the board or go for this knight on d6. Yeah, knight d6 is a great idea, actually. Knight d6 is coming in. Um, you, you never want to, what is it? Uh, what book is that? I think it's a reassess your chest. Putting a knight on a six rank is like um, a rook at this point. So it's worth a rook, and at this point, you just got to keep it there. Like, you honestly have to keep it there. Ouch, he takes it. <laughs> he does not keep it there for even a second. What is going on? I mean, on? not even – he didn't even think. He didn't even think. It landed there, and it's gone. Well, that – And he takes it with the queen. That was interesting. Yeah. I guess he didn't want to sack on d5 anymore, right? Because by now, if he takes with his rook – if uh if white trades on d5, black doesn't have a light squared bishop anymore to punish him on so this diagonal, matter. right? Right. He can just keep it. Yeah. So. He can just keep the pawn. Keep the pawn. Not the healthiest pawn because you do have double e pawns, but it is right. a pawn. Yeah. And it's uh it's still. I mean, it can convert. It can convert, or it can get give space. I can give it back later to get more or whatever. So, I like how he took with the queen here, and uh, just because of the fact that you can't really. You can, but you can't take advantage of the knight besides doubling the rooks on the file. Right. If you play e4, you always shut down the bishop. So it's not besides doubling on the file, which we can do the same with rook d8, rook d7, rook d8. And we just kind of, I guess, maybe shuffle. But I think that's not the the smartest way to go is in you just kind of sitting around waiting not to lose kind of thing. Yeah. You know? I'm, I'm shocked by that knight trade, it. man. I, I'm shocked by it. I, I've never yeah. seen such a good knight trade so quickly like that. I think, and honestly, I think he did that just because it's a clear. And looking at this, um, just mentioning that plan as he's going for it now with Rick D two, Rick D one. I think, uh, I think it's a logical way to 
what is it like you're playing for two results at this point i mean you can't really lose this white unless you just blunder honestly but oh so with, if the uh, rooks double he's still got a nice plan here it goes rook d1 rook d8 yeah. to not lose a pawn on d5 then e4 right. knight e7 and rook d6 and if that looks familiar it should because <laughs> oh, that's what Hansen <laughs> just did I just looked at that yeah wow that's very very good that's awesome rook d1 that's rook awesome. d8 played okay so that could come the point is the point is once you get the rook on d6 um you're gonna then play a move like queen a4 or queen b5 at some point so you're basically gonna force black to trade on d6 for you you make the pass pawn with d with e takes d6 and then you play e4 to e5 as well opening up your bishop and the pawn on d6 will be sick yeah, this is a, honestly a slow grind strategic win for White, it looks like at this point. I think um, I think this is going to be a, not fun, not fun, and it's going to be a very long day for him <laughs> at this game. These are the worst kind of games to be in because it's a long, uncomfortable grind where you don't have any kind of hopes and aspirations to, like, <laughs> win. It's not what you want. I'm uh -huh. just holding off. So, like, I'm like, man, I can't wait for this to be over kind of <laughs> kind of game. Cause that's how this looks like why black is just sitting and waiting white is the one that's going to play for the win here with the ideas e4 f4 queen h4 i mean what is this oh. queen h4 different different okay. oh i see the threat oh but he can't play knight e7 wouldn't work i don't know i'm wondering yeah he's threatening e4 and queen takes d8 <clears throat> and if e4 knight to e7 like i'm gonna play a6 for black like an idiot right just to show this e4 knight e7 on knight e7 he plays queen takes knight that's the move. Oh my goodness. That's the move. If Rook takes that Queen, does. Rook D8's mate. If Rook takes D2, <laughs> then he plays Queen D8. Oh my goodness, D8, guys. And this is why this is why he brings that hammer. Oh my goodness. That's scary. That's scary. You know how easily that's gonna happen? Wow. So I mean Black's gonna have to play something like G6 or H6, I would guess. Oh man. Get rid that of the back rank. Sweet. Yeah, he has to. H6. <sighs> Yeah, H6 or G6. Which is better? I think G6 runs into maybe Queen H6 ideas. Mm -hmm. But you have to follow up. If there's no follow up, it don't matter. It doesn't matter. So you, you just can't. He prefers yeah. that. Probably now, do whatever. now, maybe Jan Ludwig can play Bishop E4 covering H7. But then he doesn't have Pawn E4. So he's not renewing that E4 threat. Okay, so we still need to see what he's going to do next from here this is interesting it's very instructional because i'm trying to see what he's going to do here too there's so many pieces everything seems good all the pieces are on great squares now what's the what, what's the plan e4 doesn't work anymore 97 you can't take the it just doesn't work so what's the follow-up do you play g4 that's probably too aggressive nothing's too aggressive you got black pretty <laughs> tied up you can consider anything you want to here that's true g4 seems like an option but g4 g5 yeah, g4, g5. Something got to break because he's been relentless here with queen h4, doubling the rooks on the file. Bishop is a monster. All he needs is like an extra piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he needs one more piece on the king side. So there's g4, g5. There's f4, f5, f6. Or he could switch back to e4 and rook on d6. But I don't I know if the like queen... f4, f5, f6, though. That's I strong. The... I, I wonder how... You have to see what black's counter is going to be. f4, mm -hmm. f5, f6 is like... I mean, you might really be able to get away with that, actually. That's <laughs> just saying a lot about <laughs> Look at him. And that's what he plays right after that. All right. Right after that. I mean, you might be able to get away with that, honestly. That's so good. It's just showing your domination in a position. When you can, like, go, you know what? These are my next three moves, and I need you to stop me. And you can't. <laughs> you can't stop me, bro. Like, how are you going to stop this <laughs> next two moves? see a way i don't see a way you can't move tonight the rooks are done have done all they can do the queen has been pinned for the last five six moves yeah. and now okay he moved out of the way now he kind of had to kind of had to so let's see what's next see what he does guys so now if he plays f5 can black do anything queen takes e5 queen takes maybe e5. that's the that's the critical move i know he's going like you have you have to expect he's going to probably take on e5 so what's the What's the follow-up? Takes and takes on e6. He takes mm -hmm. with the f on. And then what? 
Yeah, Hammer about to show us the then what part. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we're looking for right now. I think he's not going to play F5. Yeah. I think the black queen coming to E5, that's not the kind of thing that he wants. I don't think that's part right. of his his version of the story. So right. Bishop takes D5. Very interesting. I mean, what's the end game? Do you do you get oh, – well, he's up – isn't he up a pawn? Three, I, six, seven, no, three, no. six. No, it's all he, equal. No, he's not. It's all equal, yeah. <clears throat> That's all equal. So it's not in game. I don't oh know yeah, what Black that had is. to take this way because if Rook D five, no, he could have played Rook takes D five. Yeah, he could have played Rook D five. Yeah, Queen takes D eight. Queen takes. Like Queen D eight. He's got Queen D eight. Right. So doesn't Black want to trade Rooks? Why do you take with the pawn? That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. I don't understand. But uh, I mean, White can temporarily not play. Oh, I see what he's doing. Maybe he wants to go around Queen G three F five because. Or well, he could go g5 and e3 mm -hmm. and swing over rook g2 and now rook d3 rook g3 yep he's probably gonna swing up and rook lift now That's yeah very interesting but i think very i think i think andrew's fine here ever since he gave up the tension with bishop takes d5 i don't think that i don't think this is the worst for black i think black has some decent chances here you know white's rooks aren't aren't that quickly getting into things i guess they're going to go to d3 maybe but Andrew should have chances. He's got a good good little amount of time left to figure things out too. I'm thinking all right for Andrew here. Yeah, I think he's I think he's fine. I think he's fine, but uh White is the one for this sharp attack with Rook D three and Rook G three. Honestly, if I had to pick a side, I would definitely pick White right now. Just because I know some... how I like to attack. There's and Rook D three Rook six. F6, really? I don't really? know if he's going to look at it, but this can be a really strong move in these positions. The point is, like, the, the white rooks aren't in the game yet, right? The black rooks aren't really in the game yet. Everybody wants to play rook d3 or, like, rook d6 and get in, right? But um, the only way in for black is f6, actually. And the idea is pawn takes f6, rook f7, or rook f8, either one. Oh, um, that's sweet. Right? Dang. That's GM right there. Dang. Look at David over here. with the, That was a big boy move. Like, f6 yeah. with rook f7. Yeah, he didn't even think of that. But I think that was brilliant, actually. It's also the factor of, uh, what is it, the surprise effect, in a way. Yeah. That was a pretty good move. I think yeah. that was... Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the right move, I, honestly. F6 I mean, strong. I know they're GMs, oh, but... Yikes. Yeah, F6 was uh, very interesting. It also throws off a lot of the player, too, because yeah. it actually does work. It's pretty cool. So yeah, I mean, if White, if White takes, it's really bad for them because it's yeah. let, letting Rick both F7. the Black Rooks into the game. And Correct. if White doesn't take, they have to move their queen somewhere. Then you get to trade on e5, and you know, then you play like rook e8, rook takes e5 or something. So you're going to get in with the black rooks first either way there, I think. Yeah. Now it looks like the white rooks are getting in first, perhaps, with rook g3. So Andrew's going to have to be careful. He's going to have to do a little bit of defending. Correct. Yep. And and I think he's going to defend this quite well. If And then here's the thing about, like, you know, I always try to look, and I always tell my students, too, like, you got to look to see – and make sure that you, what if everything goes wrong, what is black going to do next? And I know B5 and C4 is definitely going to be a problem <laughs> later on. Just because these are past pawns or they could create one. He can create one over there. And white's pawn structure is not the best. So no. if we are not careful in this line, it looks very nice, but looks are very deceiving in chess. So... You got to be careful here with the white pieces still. So even black has to be careful too, but definitely white because if the yeah. if the attack does not work, white black could easily come back with b5 c4 wide open king for white and start trying to queen pawns. My feeling would be that this is a three result position. Like white could win, <laughs> white could draw, black could win, and if you consider it. If you consider like the end games as well as the middle games, like queen g6 or queen h6 for black here trading queens. I could yeah. see either side winning the end game as well because I could see like the E5 pawn being really strong or white playing E3 at the right time and breaking up black's pawn center. Or I could see black really playing nice C4 point. and kind of just That's getting it great. rolling before yeah. white can fight it. So, yeah, talk about double edge here, guys. This is double edge. And then what makes it even better is the time's getting lower. And I know <laughs> uh, Mr. Minnesota Bl Blizzard, you know, the penguin himself, him and his penguin yeah. friends are going to be crushing it in the – lower time controls you already yeah. know like penguin is a monster 3000 rated everywhere when it comes to this time control yeah. so yes of course we do have um we do have uh jan uh mr hammer but he's he's strong he's super super strong super yeah. super strong but in, the, in his time control i think uh andrew tang is a uh, 
just better. Just I mean, you, pre you predict a tank to come from this three seed to win the whole knockout. And yeah. uh, how, how how do you feel so far about your boy? Are you like okay with what what he what he's working with this game? Uh, I don't. I'm not feeling it right now. Not feeling it right now. Yeah. But I think he's uh I think he's going to be okay because the time is lower. Even though he is down a minute right now, it's, it's really no time. There's your F6 move, by the way. Yeah, better late than never. Yeah, all right. And then Queen takes F6, and he might, or Rook F7 still is that no? But then he might have Rook G3. He has an in between move now. Right. He could play. He yeah. could play Rook F8 here if he wanted to. Oh, uh, Rook F8. Um, Rook the worst move would probably be Rook D5, Queen G7. But um, there it is. Look okay, at that, Dave. F7. That same plan. If you would have did it before, it'd be better. Much better. Yeah. It would have been much better playing F6 when you said so, because that was uh, just a little, slightly better. It was our, The Rook would have been on D2 and not and, D3. And even here, Rook F8 was better than Rook F7, because now he can't take on F6 with his Rook because of yeah. checkmate on G7, right? If he had the Rook on D7 and the other Rook coming, he could take on F6 with his Rook if he wanted to. Yeah. That was pretty, so. pretty good there. He played the F6 okay. plan. And now look what I said, guys. Remember, after the once the attack diminishes... You gotta be. You you need to be careful what's going on on the board because black is okay now. Black yeah. is straight up fine. He is totally fine. Well, now we get this crazy end game, which I also don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. And I know both of these guys are are extreme. You know, bullet specialists, and they don't take a draw. You know, they don't go to art school either. Didn't enroll in that class, so they don't like a draw. So this is going. They're gonna fight this one out. There's a minute and 20 on the uh, on the clock for Andrew Tang right now. And mm -hmm. Jan hammers up two minutes. So you got to be careful. I know you fast and all. Yeah. But, man, that's a minute and a half. That's I a mean, minute I, and a half. That's a lot of time. I mean, as long as Hammer has three minutes, it doesn't matter how good Tang is at bullet, right? Because Hammer's going to be playing blitz, not bullet. You know, he'll Correct. have enough time to figure out his yeah. moves. He's not going to flag with a two-second increment in a rook end game. Hammer, yeah. You know? Yeah, they still, they are literally still like, uh, you know, or he is still playing Blitz and he's playing like a little bit of Bullet, a minute and 22. Tang yeah. will probably like a draw, says Steve is five. Art school, yeah, guys. I mean, they didn't enroll in that class, obviously. I You'll think see. everybody like me was wondering about D3, right? You got to wonder, like, can I just push? Can I queen all these pawns? I, yeah. And I, I, I mean, I don't know the answer for you all. Um, but uh, somebody's saying maybe Tang would like a draw because if he draws, then they go to the one minute bullet game, right? Mm. Like maybe smart. That's a smart move. Um, Yeah, so I mean, maybe maybe it could be enough for him. Maybe he'd settle for for a for a draw. Let's see. Okay, so he he defended the rooks so that he could clarify the situation with the pawn trade, making it a little bit simpler. And getting to the second rank with the rooks seems kind of good against the white king on g one. It seems like it seems like Tang may still have the advantage here. Uh, absolutely. Now I'm feeling great about Tank's position. At first I was like, ah, I don't know. Now, I mean, this in game here is showing black is better than in game. There you go, rats. I, I believe the same because this king can walk around. The thing about black's king and the difference in the kings, if you look at the king positioning here, in game one on one, looking at this, the white's king cannot progress. It cannot move past the second rank. At this point, that's why the seventh rank is beautiful. You should always try to grab it for counterplay, even being down material. The seventh rank is awesome. So my king, if the black king can run around my g-pawn, and I can always get in front of the pawn. So I can get on g6, f5, start walking my king to the center. And as you see, as you see, the Mr. Hammer is in a think tank here as he is thinking, trying to figure out what to do. And actually, the, the time is getting much closer. Yeah. So black is, is better here. Black is yeah, I, mean, I think better. he's thought at least a minute and a half just on this move, maybe even close to two minutes here. Yep. And here we go. Tang immediately plays C4. B5 was played right after. Oh, wow. And he had an option, right? He could trade and play Rook to D4. And he's going to win a pawn, but it's going to head towards something that's closer to a draw. So him playing C4 immediately means he's really uh, he's really confident here. That's what it means. <laughs> yep, he's really confident. 48 seconds, so he need to move a little bit faster. I think King F7 is right now. Because if you, 
if you um if you try to do something else, White's gonna put this rook on like c7 as fast as possible. You're gonna be in trouble. Ah, oh, but That's he right. found something else. Nice. Uh, threaten a pawn. So if you threaten a pawn, is he gonna get behind it? He's probably yeah. gonna get behind it. Rook c5. Yeah. Like, King f7 now. Stopping rook e7. If White played rook e7 or something, he would still just go rook c5 and just get that motor behind the pawn. All right, so the king's got to come and blockade the pawn much better than having the rook blockade. If your rook blockades, it's, it's no good. And he comes back. Okay, that means rook d5 was not so good, James. He should have just brought his king up. Yeah, he should have just brought his king up. And, yeah. It's a minute left, 37 seconds, one minute. Can he play king? So, king? What can he do? I mean, just king f3? King f3 or something? King e1? King no, f3? no, king f3 takes, king rook c3. Oh, if king f3, then rook takes h2, and he can't play rook c3 because of the Oh, check. yeah, he can't. So, so why didn't he just take on h2? King f3? He didn't he take on h2. Either. What? He did not take on h2. I have no idea. I guess he just moved fast. He already had his... Uh, his idea in mind. Him. Yeah, right. No time to reevaluate. going this way. Yeah. Man, now look at the kings. That That's called spoiling something. That's called spoiling that's something. seconds on the clock, too. Come on. Oh, man. Tang, you got to move, big fella. This is uh, not fun. You got to do something. I think that was kind of an automatic move. He had to take that pawn. And then try to get b5 now. What about rook to b4? He has 12 seconds. Rook b4 oh my makes goodness. sense. He's wow. moving so slow right now. 10 seconds. He plays a6. Glacial. Man. Glacial. Oh, yeah. King c6. Okay. But then rook b3, I push. I don't know. Thinking again. Man, he's got so much to think about today. <laughs> right. With seconds on the clock. Oh, yeah. It's nothing. I guess well, this is just a draw now, but. Now it's a draw, and they're going to go into the bullet round. But actually, well, you know, we're going to see. Look at this. Still pushing on. Like I said, these guys don't draw anything, don't own pencils or pens at all. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like, hey, look at this. King Rook check, King G5. You're going to see some, some check again. artistry. With the check clock again. <clears throat> Use the clock as a weapon. So that's what the, uh, the strongest players do here. And 15 seconds on the clock to 36 seconds. G6. Okay. Oh, wow. Great idea. I know exactly what he's doing. Wow. Rook G4. Oh, my goodness. This is such an awesome game. All right. So Learning he's saying if the so Black much. King ever comes up to H5, he just checks on G5. Yeah. And he's just going to keep the King, you know, cut off immediately, yeah. always. If you ever bring a Rook over and try to trade, you actually lose. So the plan for so, black at some point would be like rook to g8, maybe, to defend the g-pawn and play king h5. And as soon as he goes rook to g8 or rook g7, the white king has to run. Yeah, you're actually right. Actually, Fast black can possible. play for a win, actually. Black can actually play this for a win and take this h-pawn this h -pawn and get a Lucina. I don't know what rook f7 is for. I don't. I have no idea either. I mean, he's, he's letting his king get too close. What is that move? Oh, he got six seconds, so not really... Yeah, he was down to two, so Andrew's cutting it close, but I'm sure that's just that's just normal for him. No sweat. Normal. Just normal. Got the pawn. What you gonna do now, Hammer? Oh man, you might get it. Well, I guess he knows how to. Of course, he knows how to draw his Philidor position. If yeah. he could get the Philidor. If. Yeah. Well, this one's this one's pretty easy against the G pawn. You don't yep. even need the Philidor position. You can put your rook and king on the same row and just sit. There's Shuffle, no room for yeah. black to play like rook h3, g3, rook h2 check. So That's true. he's got it. That's a draw. We're going to see our first bullet game of the day. Oh, man. I'm actually going to plug my laptop up right now because that's uh, low. So let me grab the charger. Be right back. Yeah. Boom. He's just going to miss some, some boring rook shuffles here. So... Yeah, while they while they play this out, we're gonna say we're gonna introduce like the big question. We also want to ask Andrew about this later. We're gonna have Andrew Tang on for an interview today. Uh, but the difference between one plus one and one minute, you know, if this were like a, you know, they're gonna play they're gonna play bullet, but it's one minute plus one second in this format. And um, I, I want to ask Andrew what he thinks about the difference between one and one and one and zero because, you know, if it's just one minute and zero seconds, then he's this 3,000 rated favorite. But from what I've seen from a bunch of uh, sort of speed chess championship matches where they play a bunch of one minute plus one second games, I've seen a lot of 
good blitz players manage to do okay in those bullet games, even if they're not normally bullet players. So I yeah. I think the um, one um, second may be enough to keep uh, Jan Ludwig okay, but we'll see. Correct. That one second is <laughs> – what's funny is that one second is a lot of time, honestly. It's a lot. Here it is, actually. It's going down right now. Yeah. The match has started. D4, Knight of 6. Let's see what happens. Man is in his element right now. Mena, Soda, Blizzard. We got a Nimzo Indian, Queen C2 variation. Classical. Do you see how slow they moving? <laughs> like it's it's not fast. It's not like it's not like every move. Blitz it out. Blitz it out. Blitz it out. Yeah. Because that extra second, it's literally like ah, oh, think move. Ah, oh, think move. It, you haven't yeah. even seen a pre-move yet. You haven't even seen one, which is no. it says a lot. You know, it's a different kind of game when you do have that extra second. Well, this is a nice aggressive variation with the G pawn up. I think uh, Andrew should be happy to see that because black has draw odds. So I think I think when you're facing draw odds, you'd rather have a weirder, more complicated game, if that's the choice. Yeah, and I'm liking it. I used to play this, actually, for black. This is um, dynamic. Honestly, any Indian, I've played a King's Indian, Queen's Indian, Nimzo Indian, every Indian. Mm -hmm. I've been playing them, so it's... Um, uh, it's, the common theme is playing dynamic chess. And if you play anything less than dynamic chess, mm -hmm. you might as well play like something else. Just play a Queen's Gambit decline forever or something. So just, you know, dynamic chess the right. entire time. And looking at this position, that's exactly what this is. I right like here. I like what I like what Andrew just did, man. I like that. The trade on E four allows him to play H four without knight takes G three. And Hammer's having a big think here, down to 15 seconds or so. Look at this. In Hammer's, the opening. Yeah, going, he might go down here. 10, yeah, seconds. It, 10 seconds. Come on, man. It's a bullet game. I think he forgot. I think he forgot. Okay, if knight, knight takes, he wants knight before to d3. So we're going to take with something other than the knight, right? Right, Andrew? Queen takes. Oh, he nope. took anyway. Does he it anyway. Knight before, and then what? Queen a4 check? Play... No. Oh, you just Queen take it. D4? No, you can't take it. What's he going to do? Oh, he does. He's sacking take on the four. exchange. He's anyway. sacking the exchange. That's evil, man. That's evil. Anyway, He's going to collect on G5 here before he takes on A1. Yep. yep. And C7's hanging too. Compensation. Oof. This is Should really, really, really tough for Black. G3 and Knight E4. Bishop what? G3. Okay, lock yeah. him in. Knight of six, take the bishop, take the nine. What is I mean, happening here? My. <laughs> wow. My board just couldn't even keep up with their moves. I can't. <laughs> I can't even see this thing. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> these guys are just. Before. These guys are just outpaced my computer here. <laughs> They move so fast. Wow. How is this still going? It's five seconds. How are y'all even on time? What happened here? Hammer is too good. How is this even possible? Three seconds on the clock. How is that's, he still? That's a lot of pass pawns for Andrew. Yeah. Oh, he got oh, he's a got a perpetual. He's got he a perpetual. He You'll draw it. odds and bullet, man. Wow. How did you find a perpetual on bullet with four seconds on the clock, big fella? No, he didn't. Oh, yes, he man. Did. Yes, he did. Draw. That was unreal. I mean, these pawns were coming down too, right? Like, he, he was pretty much out of time there. Yeah, and he was out of time. Hammer, hammer takes it. He played that whole game on like four seconds starting from move 10. <laughs> Yikes. That's strong, man. I mean, found the draw here. No way around it. Wow. Yeah, so see, like, we, we can ask Andrew. Like, if this was a 1-0 game, you know, would Hammer ever have saved that without the increment? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or would it just be clean over? Yeah. Which is what it is. All right. So, in a second, we'll have the first place match and the third place match. So far, we got the we got the players with the with the advantage advancing. The players with that advantage from having the bigger fan club so if you guys joined a fan club know that you 
that you helped them out, gave Hanson white with which he won his game, gave hammer draw odds in that, in that game. Obviously black was not winning that game without draw odds. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. That's a wild game. And now the next match is uh, up and coming up and coming. So the next match should be starting soon. Yep. There it is. Here's the championship game for the first knockout. Chess bras have white. Eric Hansen. Here we go. Here we go. Chess bras and the gnomes. And we've got the blitz stream and the blizzard. Yeah, they're Tang, both on. Perfect. Tang's got white here against Kevin Bordee, who's back from beating down ten people in Blitz <laughs> in the time that it yeah, took waiting. that it took Hammer and Tang to resolve that one. So, so what do we have here with the uh, Montreal yeah. Chess Bros? This game that we're starting with is basically a Roy. We've got some long opening things, is what we've got. We've got like Hammer thinking about whether to play the Rui or the Scott, or sorry, Hanson thinking about whether to play. You know, the Rui or the Italian. Or anything. He was like, what yeah. do I do? What's different? I don't know. He's out of the opening thinking here. We have a London system, and Kevin Boyd's thinking about what he should do. Yeah, move to Bishop F4. Investing a lot in that. There's not much we can tell you. I mean, there's a lot of good moves here. You can play Knight F6, Bishop F5, C5, whatever. Oh, the Berlin. Maybe that's maybe that's what put uh, Hansen in a think for a minute. He's like, "Oh shoot, I got to play this Berlin guy." Got to play the Berlin, dang! Oh man, come on. You you play e4, Canty. How you how you feel when somebody tries to play the Berlin against you? Um, you know what? I would actually just play d3. Just I play would just d3. Play d3, yeah, because Magnus is very good with it. So I would model Magnus games off mm -hmm. the d3 stuff. So I because I was tired of playing the Berlin. I was I hated playing against the Berlin. And honestly, I was an open Spanish and Berlin player myself when I played as black. So I was yeah. definitely into it. Uh, I was always into this position with black. For white, I was not a fan of it. Yeah. There's one interesting line that white can play uh, in what uh, in what we see here from uh, from Eric Hansen. There's an interesting line where you play like D4 and uh, then you play Knight C3 I've and you let black just win too. the pawn on D4. There's one yes, cool line. No. We'll see if he goes for it. No. But um, to me, this position here is infamous for some games that, yeah, that, that Carlson played that were sort of like just like forced draws straight out of the opening. Right. Um, that got repeated like six different ways. So um, it looks like uh, Jan Ludwig knows all that stuff, and he's not, he's not having anything like that. He's going to avoid getting stuck with his knight on d6. And make sure to let that bishop on c8 out. Square. That was a strong move. I mean, d6 is about to be strong. And it's yeah. also placing the bishop on a better square. Yeah. I mean, that's really, really good stuff there. He's now, like, uh, d5, let me tell you what's what's weak with d5. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that diagonal. That's true. That's true, right. d6 is going to be uh, strong. And then that white bishop's going to get out. I'm curious to know where he's going to put this knight. Is it g6, knight g7, knight f5? Or you that go happens. back to f6? That happens a lot. And uh, Knight F6 is playable, too. So I yeah. think both are options at this phase. Mm. Let's see. Something weird happened with this uh, with this I London. Know. I think uh, I think Kevin's trying to just finish it right out the gates. He's like, he's like, you're oh, opening man. so bad. Queen are B6. Chat? What's up, Oxford? What's going on? So Bishop E3, Castle Queenside. Yeah, this is a wild London. I mean, I don't know what this is. Man. Sacks his pawn on d5 instead of taking the pawn on b2. Check. Get back there. Castles. All right, so d4 is under a lot of pressure, but the black king needs to remember that he's not going anywhere. I mean, he's like this close to being mated. Yikes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a blink away from being mated with the black king. I mean, it's like a Scandinavian, like where you castle queen side. Yeah, it's like a Scandinavian where somehow he sacked his sea pawn. <laughs> yeah, sacked the sea pawn somehow. That's not, that can't be good. That can't be good. 
it feels like there should be something good for white, right? Like somehow it's Absolutely. Just I'm like knight d5. I'm looking at everything. I think you have to start with bishop e2. I agree. Okay. I think you had to start with that first. A simple development, but now Kevin wants to trade on f3 and play knight d4. Maybe white's just going to keep playing simple that? moves, you know? Like, okay, you play knight d4, now I castle. Like, what? I was just about to say, like, right, what happens if you do take on f3 yeah. and take on d4? What happens? I mean, it's a test. You've got to be tested in this. What if you take on rook takes d4, actually? Okay, maybe rook takes d4. After bishop takes f3, rook takes d4 is strong. You're hitting two points. The queen and the bishop. You yeah. can force them off queen c1, queen c1 or something. And then so that's it. Bishop takes, takes, rook takes. Queen a6. That's a random move, but it stops him from castling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. That's weird. I like yeah. white here, sis. Sworn 57. Absolutely. White weird. is... Uh, definitely playing good here yeah my instincts are just telling me that it's got to work out for white somehow but yeah it's it's pretty complicated all right this bishop is moving a lot for hammer bishop c5 bishop e3 is played to counter it and then he says you know what here's another square bishop d6 now the rook on e5 is slightly cut off here he's gonna have to head back f5 f4 is gonna come down really fast and uh hammer's getting aggressive man this is like the angry version of Hammer. <laughs> you know what's funny? I think he always plays like that. <laughs> he always plays angry, which is he's so strong. He is so strong, and you'll notice in his games, it's like aggression and anger, but soft positional brilliancy. Uh, it's like, what <laughs> in the world? Like, it's it's a hybrid kind of game. Man. Uh -huh. I do enjoy games because he, uh, he plays very aggressive. Very aggressive. Rook c4. I like the space he has on the king side. I mean... He still needs to get that bishop off c8. So there's mm -hmm. definitely problems to solve. But yeah, Something like a Kopex system, c6 and bishop c7, or even b8, um, will be the, I mean, probably one of the quickest ways to get it out and also break up the center too. Maybe b6, but that feels like that's way too slow. But white's not developed either, so yeah. slow is okay. b6 has the option of bishop a6 and just trade it off. Correct. He Correct. could also that's play the move b5 for like a tempo to play bishop b7 oh, faster look at that you already got it there yeah. you go because that was the move b5 we gotta yeah. go somewhere where are we going we only have two squares okay c3 yeah. four. now he's gonna play f4 as well i think he'll play b4 too so seems like chess me yeah that's right yeah, no it's reason good. not to play b4 actually yeah first yeah, yeah no, why first. not exactly just get the extra move i'm just lurking yeah. what's up man welcome to the stream enjoying commentary and games thank you so much for hanging out with us rook to d3 and bishop a6 is available I mean, whenever he wants it i would throw the f pawn now come on man throw that what, F pawn. what are we doing i'm about to say what are we doing with this knight okay actually f4 yeah that probably would have been nice <laughs> f4 that bishop holding down b4 and f4 right Knight of six was was nice. Oh, he was threatening knight to g4 was going to be uncomfortable. So he wanted to see. Oh, this is quite stop. bad for white, I think. I think it's quite bad straight out of the gates here. Mm. I mean, there's kind of like a race to develop, and white's moving his rooks in circles, playing weakening moves like h3. Remember, black wants yeah, to attack you on that side. Weird. It's looking weird. How many times is he? And, you know, um, I'm a big fan of the book. Hey, guys, this is a very big gem for you. If you need it, reach out to me. You can also find it online. But Chess Fundamentals by uh, Capablanca. So um, in the book, he talks about remove, uh, refrain from moving a piece twice in the opening. And how many times has this rook moved? It's moved like one, two, <laughs> half three. Half of the moves. Half, half the moves is all rook moves. And honestly, you can. it's not a coincidence that white is not in the best position. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's uh okay he's, he's, he's on, in the other game kevin did trade on f3 took the pawn on d4 with his knight so andrew tanked having to think um i guess if he castles okay. king side there's knight to b3 to think about but it probably doesn't work right knight b3 he take with the a pawn uh -huh. hit the queen and uh just win so yeah so yeah, he could just three. castle simple if he wants to but i'm fascinated by this berlin man i Oh, me too. Me too. Fascinated by it. Just to see what's about to happen. Like, Black got a great Berlin position, but maybe queen um, to... it's always capitalizing on it. I think awesome. he wants to move the queen here. That's my general feeling. But there's two different directions he could take, right? He could go queen e8 to e5. That way he attacks the d5 oh. pawn, but he also wants to slip into h2. 
take that yes, apart. That's nice. Queen e8 to e5. Then there's also queen b8, so that you can come to b5 with check and just take that pawn on d5. And that's exactly what he's thinking about. I guarantee that's what he's thinking about right now. Is yo is two moves because there's queen b8 gotta get the c4. queen off the back rank. Mm -hmm. On queen b8, yeah. maybe c4 is a strong resource for white. C4. Solidifying that stuff. F4. So I think queen e8 is going to be right. But finally, the first move where I don't want him to play f4, he plays it. I mean, <laughs> I got a lot that. to learn. <laughs> bishop d4, he, I think he's, is he going to just snap? No, but take it on d5, runs into bishop takes g7. Uh, maybe so. then he'll play knight e3. Wait, he does it anyway. Does it oh, anyway. knight e3 check. Right? I don't know. Okay. Something. Something. Anyway, he said, I, that's not a move. I don't care. So he goes for it. Bishop yeah. takes g7. Here we go. The tactics are here on the board. Did you yeah. do your puzzle rush today? I mean, Eric knows this is a situation where you just got to take on G7. Like, whatever may come of it, like, you just got to do it. If knight E3, maybe he's got rook takes knight. I was thinking that too. Rook takes knight and then trade off. Maybe rook F5 is coming. That's that's the kind of move I want to see. More pieces, more violence. Ooh, rook F5. Yeah, that's, that's violent. Rook F5. That's a good move. Rook Norway F5 Gnomes has declined a draw at some point in here. Yeah, he did. Of course, he's I like, man, notice... I'm tired of y'all. I don't draw anything. I Stop didn't notice it. which move it Rockers. was on, but but at some point, that means that Hansen has offered a draw with White in this game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, looking at uh, looking at Kevin Bordy yeah. and Tang, there's Bishop to G5 on the board, so. I think black is going to be slightly better soon. Oh, but then there's open lines, though. So I think it's double-edged. I'll say that. 3-6, three, 3-6. Six, three, six. So it's even. So nobody's up any material. Yeah. So with that said, if I'm not a material here, who would I rather be? Honestly speaking, rather be white just because of the bishop lines. And it looks like I have yeah. something. But if you look a little bit further, a little bit further, black is actually okay. He can take stuff. He can take my light square bishop. He can play bishop b4. So it's not, it's it's honestly probably equal. Honestly, I think. I don't hard know, what to you, say. What? I mean, it yeah, feels like it feels like e5 was a nice move that helped black a little bit by shutting off this diagonal from f4 to b8 that was making his king uh, kind of uncomfortable. So it seems like that worked out well for black. I'm not sure why Tang had to play this move queen d3. It kind of looks like a wasted move to me compared to just castling. Um, but, uh, I don't know. Kevin's like Kevin's pawn sack opening, which I was skeptical of is not looking so bad right now. Yeah, it's not, it's not anymore. Yeah. And queen. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. E5. Yeah, E5 was strong. Cause that check on C4 was devastating. It was just devastating, but, back to um, D2. bishop to D2. So he went back. I understand. That's a, a classic Scandinavian kind of move. So on knight to B3. He's playing queen f5 check. Yeah. On knight b3, queen f5. That's the key tactic. So he plays bishop so b4. Just yet. Man, white's got to be crushing. It feel like he's crushing right now. a3 is an option. Uh, I mean, castle kings. Well, that's check. Well, a3 think... doesn't do anything because the rook on a1 is undefended for the moment. What did he do? For the queen moment, right? He checked them. Okay. Queen c4, and then king b8, and what's the follow-up? He's going to castle queen side is my feel. Oh, that feels right. Yeah, get out of the way. Because you defend a2 now. Because bishop takes c3 and but a2 there is, But there is knight takes f3. It's not bad for black. Is it? Mm, just knight get takes rid of that really good bishop take. now. Knight e7. Yeah. Hmm. It feels Still like is. black survived the worst. Some great games today, says BJH13. Yes, bro. Awesome games here at the Pro Chess League Summer Series. Yes, sir. Okay, knight e3 check was played by Hammer, and now it's uh, Hansen who's having a think about it. I would expect rook takes e3 here. Oh, but then he could take the rook with the pawn. And then on bishop f8, queen f8, huh? Oh, there it is. He did play knight e3 check. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. So this is complicated. Yeah. This game's going to be fun. I <laughs> know. Uh, I'm already like, oh, yeah, taking all, all these sacking and bishop takes g7. Take this one. I can take you with check. Knight e3. It's just tactics all through this game i'm loving it but he is contemplating which way to take and oh yeah. he does get compensation though if you take with the pawn i mean he gets some serious comp 
Well, you got queen f3 after bishop takes f8, though. Bishop takes, I mean, rook takes e, no, sorry, pawn takes yeah. e3. Yeah. Uh, f takes e3 check. Oh, bishop... black can't play f takes e3 check there because then bishop takes f8 and he's down a rook. Right, he's just down a rook. Oh, yeah, yeah, so pawn takes, he has to take on g7. And right. So if pawn happened? takes, he's going to play king g7. And uh, white could consider e4 in that position. Maybe queen d4 yeah, check. I don't know. But something like e4 to try and not open up that rook and bishop so fast. Correct. So, yeah, you don't want to open that up at all. Man, he's thinking a long time on this here. He's in a think tank. Yeah. He's definitely thinking. Eight minutes, though. He does have time. Yeah, they've got time to play some serious moves here. And we have, yeah, queen d5. We off, we have a queen trade with Kevin Gordy and Tang. Queen trade not accepted. Right. Man, look at black, though. Black is, like, putting some pressure on the white here. Yeah, he's good, right? He's putting some pressure on guess, the on the white king. I guess there's a huge question if he could grab the A pawn here. I mean, yeah. I would want that pawn. I would Honestly. want that pawn. Right, I'm taking it. Pawn grabbers is the hat. I do have it on my head now, so I am going to grab this pawn. Bishop takes, takes, queen takes, a2. And looks like we're fine. Yeah. I mean, white's bishop is pretty well blocked in by that f6, e5 the pawn issue, structure. The issue, though, is a rookie, rook d7. That's mm -hmm. strong. Rook d7 and mate threats and all kind of stuff. Yeah. That's scary. So maybe not. Dang, he's, he's contemplating. So maybe he might just go with 97. 97. Just develop 97, 96, 94, and just chill. Relax. Yeah. I mean, you got to do nothing crazy. Just yeah. relax. Yeah. Just finish development. That's got to be right. Mm -hmm. All right. 93 checks still sitting on the board here. It took him two and a half minutes to play it. It's taking Eric man. a while to respond. I mean, that's appropriate, man. When stuff like this is happening and you've got 10 minutes on the clock, you've got to give it a good thought. <laughs> You need to use them 10 minutes because yeah. you need every last minute to calculate this stuff out. The problem, though, is like if we go, well, we have to take the night. So I think, you know, the, the, the last part, no matter what line he goes for, is the problem. Usually I always tell my, my students like uh, small problems become big ones later. So the, the small problem is the night being undeveloped. And because it's still undeveloped, at the end of any whatever line we look at, the knight still has to come out, meaning we're kind of slightly behind on development because the queen develops strong. It comes out like swinging. So knight d2 is going to be uh, – st I'm still lacking development here. And that does go back to how many times we move that white rook as well. So it yeah. is uh, – it's, it's, you have to pay attention to this. I think he's trying to contemplate what's the best way to go with this. Maybe rook takes just to simplify a little bit. Yeah, I'm trying out a variation – um, since we got a little time here to look at it, I'm trying out rook takes, pawn takes e3, bishop takes f8, queen takes f8, and then I want to try queen g4 check for white. And I'm trying to get a queen trade for white, basically. Because if the king goes to h8, I've got queen to d4. Yeah. And I'm going to try and keep checking this king till I get a queen trade. That's a good idea. Queen trade would absolutely, I think, would honestly favor white because that knight's going to be able to bounce around but the center um we have to be careful with the center because he, he can't get d5 in control some squares and stuff he gets annoying it's just sharp stuff he's still he's still thinking still thinking right now yeah Four minutes down on the clock and knowing what kind of player hammer is i mean like you can't be down more than a minute or two on time and really because when when he starts to pick up speed and playing the strong moves too as well. And and he's the one of those players is I don't draw anything. I'm not having a draw. It's gonna be hard to play this when you get in time trouble. Like yeah. that. Four minutes on the clock is you know, use the clock as a weapon. That's very tough. That is a lot of time being used here. Four minutes. Yeah. He is still in the tank. And we have an interesting wild position here over here now with Blitzstream and um Tang with a knight on A uh oh, he played and he just queen takes b a three hanging. Okay, he was just looking for one of those. I mean, he doesn't have anything like immediately decisive. I think he was just looking for one of those things where you put your queen on a three for two pawns and the king's position is kind of bad. But um, 
probably throw in knight d4 first as well. Um, so why does bishop b4 not work? So knight is a2. It a problem? I mean, you just trade everything on b4, it looks like. Pretty much Unless you have a check. Is. Oh, he gets a seventh rank again. That's very annoying. I mean, rook d7 in all lines, no matter what. And well, what about you... knight takes b4, knight so. takes b4, queen b3? Oh, boy. What do you even do? Probably resign? Bishop b4, knight takes, takes queen b3. And you sit around, you look around for a second, yeah. realize I jumped off the deep end, and then resign. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what would happen. So there I think are. actually right here might be that time. I might have jumped off the deep end here, and it's it's uh it's over. I yeah, because you... if he just retreats the queen, then White's gonna take on a three with their queen at this point, right? And you got yeah. nothing for the sack. Just so man, this is out. Yeah, this is out. Ouch! And it's crazy that something like that just happened. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy, man. He had okay. a great position. Here's what here's what Hammer did. I've been thinking about this too. After Rook takes e three, Pawn takes e three. Bishop takes f8. If he played queen takes f8, that queen g4 check move that I was looking at before was annoying. I could yeah. at least get equality for white once I trade the queens. So I was thinking he might play this move, which he did. Queen to f6, leaving the bishop on f8. And the rook hanging, and his mate on f2. Talk Everything. about tactics, guys. Talk queen about five check. You do worse today. Look King at that stuff. To That's nasty. B2 is hanging. I don't know what is going on right now. There's too many things. Mate's hanging. There's a piece. There's one, two... Three pieces hanging, well, one of them being a pawn, meaning b is hanging, there's mate right. hanging, bishop hanging, rook on a8 hanging, king's looking crazy, knight still on b1. I have no idea what to call here. This I is think one he's of expecting, where... I think he's expecting queen f3 here. That's what I've yeah. been looking at at least. Uh, because otherwise, white can't take on a8 or save the bishop because of the checkmate on f2. That much is like clear enough. So if you play a move like f3, then he wants to recapture on f8 with his rook instead of his queen. And we can look at that position for one second and know that White's not having this. I mean, no development, B2 hanging, king weak, all the black pieces coordinated. Like, that's just not okay. So it's got to be queen f3. He's played it now. Yeah, that's what he played. That's what he but played. But he's down to just under two minutes against eight. You know, looking at oh, a long yeah. end game here, maybe after queen f3, pawn f3, rook f8. So yeah. I don't see much joy for him. Or what about rook f8 first even could be good. I'm about to say rook f8 right now might be winning. Yeah, because then after rook f6, f2 is hanging, and if f3, bishop e5. Yeah, and that, and look at your knight. Like, the knight is just miserable, and playing, honestly. And you're playing c3. Miserable. And Same looking good now. So I'm going to play d5 right. there for black. That's that's my ultimate yeah, evil move. Yeah, I thought move. d5 was d5, coming. And d5 and comes, it's, it's, it could be over. Because you got two pawns in the center. They're strong. And this is really tough. There's too many things to defend. Which yeah. Is, just can't get so, these white pieces out. Yeah. Just white people hate playing against the Berlin so much because it's boring for white. It's boring. <laughs> That's why I, I hate playing against boring stuff. I know <laughs> what kind of player I am. I like, I love pal stuff. I like sacrifice pieces. I like the great stuff. I like meeting people very quickly and fun. And You're stuff, like, did right? you just ask me that question? Yeah. Did you ask me why people hate playing against it? Because it's boring, man. <laughs> it's boring. It's so boring. I wanted to mate you and you tried to like tell me to win a boring end game. Right, I'm not into it. I am not into it. So you want to play openings or play things that complement your game. I'm it's zero nice. and one against the Berlin myself. So, zero and one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm in that same category. Just ugh. playing the game. But that's mm -hmm. also because normally I avoid it with the King's Gambit, you know. So like nobody, oh, see, nobody's that. Yeah. nobody's playing any Berlins <laughs> against the King's Gambit. No. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Try it if you like. Queen F3. So he's in a think tank still. So yeah. it is a lot to think about. I'll actually just move. Queen takes f3. All right. Really? Yeah, this is going to be fantastic for uh, for Jan Ludwig. I've been looking at the position long enough at this point that my brain, which sort of slowly makes its evaluations, has uh, has come to the conclusion this position is phenomenal for black. I oh, think you yeah. play bishop e5 here first when the knight can't move. Force white to put that pawn on c3. Then you take on f2, and if white ever plays knight d2, you'll pick the pawn on c3 too. Oh, man, that's nasty. That's over. Yeah, that's a very, very beautiful strategic plan. And actually, I played the accelerated dragon um, against uh, the, the Sicilian, actually. So I, when I'm playing it, there is a line like that, very similar. It's actually in a queen takes d4 lines where they do have bishop to e5, 
And after C3, uh, you just kind of sit there and let it not do anything. So you expect them to play A3 as well, which is coming later. But that, this, is, uh, this is tough. Plays Rook G8. Interesting move. Going for Rook G1. That's strong. Dang, that's good. Dang, oh, that uh oh, so that's even better, huh? That's out. That's out. You that's can hit lights the out. Button. I was like, I was like, with my with my version, he could be at least that up a pawn. Hard. But this is just like the guy's not even gonna have the heart to play. And that is why he is so much stronger. That is why he has that rating that y'all saw earlier. Okay, like Richie, Richie eight. We have so many ideas, but he found the right one, which is Rook to G1. A3, I mean, what if I go Rook G1 anyway? Anyway, the Knight is not going anywhere. Yeah. Not going anywhere. And the Rook is is like, how do you... I don't know. I don't think there is a way. I mean, any move uh, other than Rook G1 looks like a blunder because like, if Black takes on A3 here, then Knight takes A3. Goodbye to the right. Rook G1 plan, right? If Black plays like A5 or something to try and keep the Knight limited, White trades on B4. Maybe that's one move that's playable. A before, A before the knight's still trapped. But white can take on E3, and if you go rook G1, he's got rook A8 check, and then knight to D2. So, yeah, it's also a blunder. It's also, so you yeah. just you just got to go rook G1 direct. And wow. now... My friend told me I have to give it up and switch to the Roy if I want to get better, but I love the king's gambit. Don't lever. Nope, don't let him tell you that. Keep playing your king's gambit. Keep playing it. Keep on playing it. Rook to C1 is a move, actually. Yeah. Hello, Canty. What's up? 25,000. It's good to see you, bro. All right. So, Rook to G1 and King to F2. I think Rook to C1 is just fine. Uh, but here's the thing. We do have him pinned. How do we get to the knight? Like, how do we get the, the second piece there? Oh, you don't even need to. You just leave those pieces there to stew. Bring out your king. Take the H pawn with your relax. king, maybe. Then run your own H pawn down the board. Okay. Simple, simple. Because th this is uh, the pieces are paralyzed. The best plan for white would be get the king to c two, defend the knight, so you can move the rook. That should be it. But by the time you do all of that, I've taken the h pawn, the f pawn, and started operations of pushing my h. There's my pass pawn and other stuff. Yeah. A six. That is a very interesting move. I mean, that's deep. I mean, yeah, he's... like he definitely. That is deep, right? He's What's considering these on? scenarios. God, He's considering a few scenarios, right? He's considering scenarios where White at some point plays Rook takes A7 and sacks the Knight just to try and then draw that endgame. Um, so this way, if White plays Rook takes A7, Rook takes A6 instead of Rook A7, the Rook won't be hitting his pawns on the seventh rank yeah. when White goes for it. And that was deep, and that's why I thought about that too, just in like in the sense like, well, I guess prophylactic, which is a uh, very good, I think the best one to prophylactic was uh, Petrosian with that. And I was like oh. a Petrosian type move. He can cut like, the king off with rook c1, can't he? And you know oh, that's nasty. Rook c1, big fella. You and know that's nasty. King d2, bishop f4, check. Just stay away from it. You're never touching this stuff. And then you walk the king over. King yeah. h6, h5, h4, Just, take the pawn. King g2 and walk the pawn. Yeah. Having a walk in the yeah. park with the dogs. Very he simple. He can do that old hey, Babe Ruth thing. Point, point where he's going, right? Nice. The king's coming to h3. <laughs> <I'm going laughs> Nothing here. you can do about it. Right here to this square. I'm going to put a, a finger on this square. That's where I'm going. Bishop f4, rook c1 for black. Yeah, there oh, it yeah. is. Rook c1's on the board. This is a resignation. It should be. Yeah, that, Under <laughs> that's... Under <laughs> it's over. That's some high class. That's some high class. The gnomes. That man is super strong. Super strong. Yeah even do i guess your best or dang that doesn't work either i was about to say try c4 b5 but c4 you just take on b4 you b3 i mean but none should, of those like, moves threaten anything out. right as long as you can't they get your king to anything. c2 like he's just yeah, gonna ignore it and keep uh, walking his king all right it's like these computer moves where they're like oh mate in seven and you're yeah. like how is it made in seven because they throw in the pieces at you the yeah. checks like the Oh, you you have to consider this move, which is not a move, but you have to do it anyway. All right. So yeah, that's that's kind of what it's like here. King to e four. Mm -hmm. King to g six. So basically, what he wants to look at is some scenario where, like, with a pawn on c four or something, he could play rook takes a six, rook takes b one, c five. Like you gotta like look for some kind of little trick, 
anything. of some sort, right? Some right. some version where you just abandon the knight and try and get out with the rook. You don't want to just just sit here and play king e4, king d3. And, oh, and, and well, like, yeah. Dang. <laughs> I oh, was so just saying this, like, try to get the king to a2, but then how are you getting the rook out? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> king on a2. Then you play b3. Then you play king b2. <laughs> Yep. It's possible, maybe. Oh, it's man. possible, but this H pawn is going to queen. So Yo, he stopped his not. king march. Everybody, you got to be careful to win a game. I mean, we're laughing about how how over this is, but you have to be careful. If you play king g five here, rook a five check, then knight d two, and you got to start the game all over again. So you have to pay attention. But um, there it is. No running the H pawn was it was, it was a good was a good way to do it because any situation that evolves where white plays rook takes a6 at some point and sacks the knight, black's winning plan would just be to queen the h-pawn, right? And he'll be ready for it. So that's, yeah. I mean, yeah, Hammer knows what he's doing. So h5, I mean, h4. It's genius. Just, man, it's such, such great play and it's such like free lessons you get watching these guys play. Fantastic. So a big three points for the Norway Gnomes and the chess bras sit on a very bad total after week one, James. I'm just going to throw this out there. They got three points from their club match. They got two points for getting second place in this knockout from Hansen. That's five points. In the last three divisions, in the first week, one team took the lead with five points. Exactly five out of six. And all three times, they did not make the playoffs. Wow. So this could be, that's a curse. <laughs> Curse of the five. There's a curse there on that five. So we'll see. Curse of the five. We'll see. Let's but see what um, we're going to take a quick break now. We'll be back with an interview with Andrew Tang, Grandmaster Penguin, and uh, then a match between uh, his his Blizzard fans and uh, Yun Ludwig's uh, Gnome fans. So right, don't guys. go anywhere. We'll be right back. See you in a minute.
Welcome back, everybody. We are here with Grandmaster Andrew Tang Hi. of the Minnesota the Blizzard. Himself. What's up, bro? I'm good, thanks. Nice. So, Andrew, the first thing we wanted to know is where does the Penguin GM name come from? What's with penguins? Sure. I mean, I've liked penguins since I was a kid. Actually, this username is very old. I think I made it when I was seven on ICC, and I've just stuck with it since. So it's I easier see. for people to know who I am. Does that mean at age seven you were thinking about being a GM? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. That makes sense because you don't see a lo you don't see like tons of GMs giving themselves usernames like GM something or other, yeah, right? Yeah, it feels a little silly now, but yeah, but a I seven year old was... kid. Yeah. Okay, so you knew what you wanted. That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Well, you're famous as a as a bullet player, and uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about was the difference between one zero and one one. Because like in these knockouts, you play one one, and mm -hmm. uh, do you follow the the speed chess championship matches? Yeah, I watch it a bit. Um, You've watched some of that? 1-1 one, one is definitely a lot different, for sure. There's no flagging races at the end. Okay, because I've seen like a bunch of people who maybe don't really practice bullet, but they seem to still sort of do okay in those speed chess championship matches. Yeah. Um, do you think the sure. one second sort of like is enough for like a blitz player to keep up with a bullet player? Um, Probably for most people, yeah. As long as you're you know, not flagging, it, it feels kind of a lot like blitz, regardless of starting with one minute, for me at least. But What's your best tip you can give the everyone watching right now in bullets? Best tip? Um, a lot of it is about anticipation, I think, especially in the time scrambles and pre-moves, you just need to try to predict what your opponent's going to do, and that can save you a lot of important seconds, especially at the end. That's awesome. Okay. But, yeah, otherwise, I try to just play it like chess. I don't know. Okay. So you had you had one of these one-on-one -on -one games with uh, Jan Ludwig um, yeah. just now that was really like intense, and we thought when you sacked the exchange, it was probably like a huge advantage for you. Um, do you think that, like, in a one-minute game, it would have been harder for Black to, like, stay in that game than in a, a one and one Yeah, I mean, if it was 1-0, I think I definitely would have won. But even so, I was very upset because I just let him trick me. I think I was completely <laughs> winning, even at the end. Yeah. The Up until draws. the perpetual? Yeah. Right. But I missed easier wins. Like, I could have won a piece, I think, earlier as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you expect yourself to see all kinds of tactics in those one-minute games? And, like, like, are you beating yourself up? Like, I should have seen that. I definitely should have seen it. Or is it like you know you're going to miss some number of things as long as you win the game, it's okay? Okay, yeah. I expect to miss some things. But the problem was, like, I had this 92 move, which I saw during the game right after I moved. Moved, and that made me kind of upset. And you don't really want to get upset by missing things. You should just try to forget about it. But... But with all your practice, you can still get upset. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because it made the win a lot harder, at least. Yeah. And I let him slip. Well, that's that's good to know. I mean that you guys plan to win the entire thing. You plan to single handedly do it yourself. Huh? Sorry. Do you plan to single handedly win? The I'll try. Game? It, but... <laughs> I'll try. That's what we need. Help. Yeah. You're gonna need yeah. some help. Yeah. How do you feel about having the fans involved? Yeah, it's really cool to see that the fans can can get involved and help help the team in our attempt to win this. That's exciting, man. Not just about us; it's goal. about the fans. Um, what would you say your next goal is, chess wise? Um, with college, it's going to be more difficult, but I want to hit twenty six hundred at least within the next couple of years still i'll Not still try to play during breaks and that's in that's in fide right because as yeah, as canty yeah. said online you're like three thousand something and everything yeah that's right in fide okay i got one more question about the fans do you know any of like the fans that are playing for the minnesota team like do you know any like local seven-year-olds who are dreaming of being uh -huh. you one day and coming out for the team i think some of them are busy but 
I definitely know some of the local kids um, are playing for us. I'm not sure about who signed up so far, but mm -hmm. definitely. Definitely. There are some local kids who, who like following the Blizzard. Nice, nice. And do you have kids following your stream too? Like you and John Bartholomew, you both stream. Are there like seven-year-old kids watching and cheering for your bullet games? Yeah, yeah. I've seen some fans at tournaments. It's really cool when they say hi and ask for an autograph. So. Yeah. That's what cool. is the number one mouse to get for all the bullet players out there? For anyone, just chess period, the number one mouse you recommend. Yeah. The one I'm using is the Asio X01. So um, you can Google it or something. Perfect. That's what we get in. That's it, right? 100 points yeah. game right there, guys. 100 points. All right. I got to write that down. Ozio X01. <laughs> EXO. EXO. Yeah. EXO1. That's what he uses. Again, you All gain right. 100 points per click. Because I need to make 2200 in bullet, James. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I'm, right. I'm ready to try a different mouse. Oh, for man. Sure. I'm trying to get 2600 in bullet. So 2600. Oh, my God. Yeah, right. you, don't have, I know we... you don't have any problems, man. Sure. Yeah, I'm trying to get to uh, like like the penguin man over here. Twenty six hundred. So, so Andrew, why are you going to college instead of just becoming a professional streamer? I mean, okay, I'd like to play chess professionally, but I think I don't want to coach. So as a twenty five hundred rated player, I don't don't think it's the most stable job, at least at this point. Mm -hmm. so I'd, I'd rather keep my options more open. And okay. Go to but if yeah. you if you could make a million dollars a year playing bullet, would you drop out? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that actually. You heard that, kids? If you find a way to make a million dollars playing bullet, <laughs> don't go to school. <laughs> oh man, that was great. All right. Well, Andrew, we're gonna give you two minutes to get ready for your match. Um, you'll be playing two more games against Jan Ludwig, so I assume those would be pretty pretty interesting games for you. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, good luck. And uh, good luck to all your fans. Good luck to you, Andrew. All right. Going to my... Let's see here. Oh. Okay. All right. So, uh, now we're going to get ready for this match in just a couple minutes here. Mm -hmm. Um... Let's look at uh, let's look at the bracket real quick of what teams have made it to the playoffs during this last minute we've got here. Um, a chance for anyone who's uh, late to get in on this to go join the Blizzard team or the Gnomes team. Um, so we've got uh, we've got the Capybaras, the Archbishops, Snowballs, Wizards. Pandas and Puffins all into the championship bracket. Let me see if you predicted all that, James. All right. Let me have a look. Yeah, Let me have a bracket. look at your bracket. See if you got those teams right. Take a look at my bracket. This one yep. Go. You got all of them, man. I got all of them? Nice. You got all of them. Yeah. Between your bracket and their bracket, they just need to add teams in. You even got all the seeds right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's nice, man. <laughs> <laughs> where is it yeah here we go oh yeah yeah st louis is gonna win but that's it man st louis is going to win there's not that much suspense with st louis it's just it's really it's no other way around you have to get through them and you just can't get through them right now yeah. it's just not happening right <laughs> I had the same opinion, man. If I switch to my bracket for a second here, we got St. Louis Archbishops winning it out for me too. Um, one thing I noticed in your bracket is like how strong the bottom half of your bracket is with the Snowballs, the Pandas, the Gnomes, and the Archbishops. That's like three Final Four teams on one side of the yeah. bracket, Ooh, plus the Gnomes nice. who had like that really close match with Baden Baden to be in the Final Four. So it's like. You don't want to be on that side of the bracket. You want no offense, but you want to be on the Capybaras and uh, Chessbras side of the bracket. I think that's true. That's true. I believe. I believe so. I mean, especially uh, there's so many heavy hitters. I mean, Wizards. Like, oh my goodness, the Wizards are, are monsters. Wizards. Then you have the bottom bottom of Snowballs. You got the Pandas who tore it up. Like, I don't know what's going to happen here, but I mean, I, realistically speaking, but I know, I know St. Louis 
is going to just kill everything. I think they're going to just go yeah. and, and do their thing. That's ridiculous. It's, they're so strong. It's un, unreal. Unreal. And we yeah. already see that everybody else is like super strong. 79 points and the club match is re it's it's it made history. So, you know, um, even though St. Louis didn't do that, but it's still the fact that who they have on the team, it's always stacked. They win every single time. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, you and you and I are kind of in agreement on uh, on what this looks like with St. Louis. Um, you got a lot of enthusiasm going for the pawn grabbers here in your bracket. Is this uh, biased or, or is this? Uh... Just, of course, we're underrated. We're the wild card. We're always the wild card. I looked at it, um, especially uh, with when we got third place came out of nowhere. Just because you don't know what's going to happen, you just don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. In these club, in these uh, group matches, and in, in the group, the group sections or whatever group B, you didn't know what was going to happen. So, um, of course, they're like, oh, Bond Grabber's not going to do it. And I'm like, yes, we are. And then they got third place. And I'm like, that's okay. But, you know, we were we were really close. We were really close. But we yep. are in a Twitter poll, so we had a, a good team and everything. So Have you guys excited. have you guys ever beaten the Chess Bros before in the regular season? In the regular season, I don't think so. Not in the regular season. But we have we have wins. We just haven't won. You just haven't won the whole match. Right. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. All right, as I as I ask you those tough questions, this match is kicking off. We've got another uh, Catalan from Jan Here Ludwig, and we thought he did a great job of solving the opening problems in the Catalan, right? He managed to put a lot of pressure on Andrew against this variation he wasn't prepared for. He controlled E5. He put Black kind of on the back foot, and then he let Andrew get out of it. And uh, I imagine that that he'd like to play a better game. Than, than that last one. I don't think that draw was was satisfying. Yeah, and actually, uh, he's got. We, I'm curious to see what's going to happen now. Same moves. I mean, so far, Queen takes C4 is on the board. We mm-hmm. played this cool line with Castle Bishop at four. Yep. yep. And now, now we're gonna see what's going to happen. Is he gonna go for the same line? Because they played this already. They have yeah. already been here. So now we need to see. The first person to stop and think is the person who's not happy with how that opening went. So that award goes to Andrew Tang. But uh, Queen E7 still had to be played. I mean, like 100%, that's the right move. But that hesitation there for 15 seconds just tells you that he's not 100% happy with how things went. He wants to change something in the opening. He's not going to repeat this whole thing. Yeah, he's going to change something. And that's usually how it is when you guys are locked in. For anyone that gets locked Ooh. in or plays somebody multiple times, start, start changing things up. And that's how you uh, start to see different different positions and build different patterns and basically build different brain cells in that game when you're learning and uh, uh, opening and stuff like that and the experience with it. Because this is something that I'm sure he knows now. He moved really faster. Uh, now than he did in the last game they played. So, but now somebody's, Hammer is somebody's moving faster than them. The Blizzard, their first fan won a game in under a minute, and now they've oh. already got two points to their name. Wow! Wow! So, so that? yeah, where's that game at? I don't, I don't know. Here. Oh, it's Tundra, Tundra against Awesome. How did you do that? Crush team. I mean, twice fast. Wow! Build brain, different brain cells. That's right, short team. Yep, you build in brain cells. How are you? You ender just CC. resigns on move four. I don't know about that. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> didn't seem to be any reason for it. So same line here, guys. Same line. Bishop knight d5, and he's trying to figure this thing out. A3. Was that the same move from last time? I think it was. Take taken in b6 or something like that. So those two games remember. were from the same match. That was a. That was a. That was a 2-0. That was kind of a throwing game kind of situation, yeah, I, yeah, I, I fear. <laughs> Threw them. Boom, boom. But, uh, yeah, you can only control the fans so much. Yeah. <laughs> they do what Bishop they're going to do. I can do it. My opponent still hasn't played a move, says Sharkima. What, uh, what side are you playing on? Let me he'll, see if I can he'll have to play you. eventually, or, or you guys will be, be winning the match. The, for the fans. Oh, they have three now, 3-0 lead. And shout out to Christopher VH for winning that one. Yeah. Tundra Mike says, hey, oh, my opponent resigned for no reason. I have no idea why. Well, yeah, yeah it's, it sucks, but it's okay, though. Yeah. Still got two points. Two points. Yeah, you scored a couple points for your team. 
I'm I'm sure you would have preferred to play. But uh yeah, let's see if Sharkima's opponent has moved for him. Playing for Minnesota says Sharkima. Nope, That's still excellent. waiting. Still waiting. Yeah, still waiting. <laughs> still waiting. Well, the gnomes are going to have to do better than that. I mean, resigning on move four and not even moving a piece. Come on, guys. Look what look what Jan Ludwig's doing. Play like this. It's not a move. And actually, wait. Oh, okay. You, I'm like, a knight takes f4, queen takes f4. I was like, is that a piece? It's not a piece. So what is black going to do here, though? That's a great question. Yeah, this is a difficult plan because now b6 is not the same anymore. In the last game, you played b6, and bishop b7, but playing b6 traps the bishop on a5, so a little bit different. Yeah, so he's keeping his peace this time. It's interesting. Love having Cantino commentary. Thanks, BJH. What's up, bro? It's going to be some more work for that bishop c8 this way. That's right. Oh. Why not bishop takes d5 for white, somebody's asking. Yeah, we um we covered that the first time around um, when they had the same opening in the knockout. But basically, if you give up this light squared bishop, then the black bishop will come to, you know, c6 or b7 at some point, And you're really going to pay. You're really going to pay for that. Um, the biggest problem in black's position right now is the bishop on c8. You trade on d5, it becomes like the biggest asset in his position. And uh, it's not so... It's not so easy for white to play that position after you win the pawn. That's correct. That's correct. You have a lot of problems, um, you know, especially with, with white having like the activity he does right now with uh, the three pieces on the fourth rank. Knight of six and bishop g5 are actually real moves that can, can happen. You see a quick trade on f4 already, and there's a plan, king h1, rook g1, and use the g file. And there's a lot of play for white here, as I, I really like this improvement that uh the hammer put with the white pieces here due to the last game of what happened so i think he's doing well right now mm -hmm. black needs to figure out what to do bishop b7 bishop c6 seems right because you got to get the last piece out but i think he's expecting yeah. that just wondering to see what white has planned for that i think the best black can do for the moment is get that bishop to c6 just like you say then he's got the possibility of like rook d4 or something at some point white might play e3 to stop that he's got h4 for his queen so she can cover checkmate on h7, make knight g5 less of a problem. Mm. And, um, you know, maybe attack f2 in some cases, or f4, h2. I think black's got space for all their pieces, so it should be it should be competitive. I don't see them getting knocked out just yet. Correct. Yeah, king h1, rook g1, and, um, and it's, it's going to be some play here. h6 definitely stops knight to g5. And now, uh, yeah, black has to consolidate, get that bishop on c6, and he'll be okay. And white needs to do something quickly. He, I wonder what he's thinking about right now. Like, what other moves are considered here? Other than king h1? Right. Maybe e3. Yeah, Maybe okay. e3. That move pretty yeah. much looks like it may have to be played at some point. Defending f4 mm -hmm. and keeping black out of d4. Yeah. Blocking a bishop up. Hello, Pruis Canty. Is this a knockout? Yes. Oh, no, not this one. Nope. Actually. I mean, yeah, this is a club match. This is the start of the club match. We got another probably like 50 minutes or so to wrap to wrap this up it's right at the beginning. I like white here because of the pawn structure. Um, okay. All right. Well, I mean, it depends on how you like the pawn structure because it's not a good pawn structure. As to like, I'll say dynamic to say better from there. Couldn't they withdraw before it started at a time? Yeah. Camera swindle thing. Guy in box says we in here. What's up, box life? Good to see you. Okay, thanks. No problem. Chess Weeb. And make sure you guys follow Chess Weeb as well. That is Ilya. Ilya is a streamer. Yeah. Grandmaster Ilya. So this so, is seven. There he goes. If you're new here, if you weren't watching the whole thing, Norway Gnomes, that is Jan Ludwig Hammer. Minnesota Blizzard, that's Andrew Tang, who just gave us a fun interview. And uh they they already played the knockout. The winner of the whole knockout was Jan Ludwig Hammer, so he's got a good start on his day. And uh, Andrew Tang took third in the knockout. So he scored one point already for Minnesota. The Gnomes have three points in the standings already. That's where we're at. That's where we're at, guys. And right now the club match reached 4-0. to zero. 
yeah. four to zero in the club matches. But that means nothing, as we just saw the chess bras in the first match were down by the biggest deficit of 11 points. Started yeah. out being down like 11, and then came back and won by one point, 53 and a half, or 54, I think, and a half. So 53 yeah. and a half. Man, Something looking like at that. this match, like the ratings are so balanced for both teams. Often you'll see one team like has like more high yeah, rated maybe. players or just has more yeah. players total. So as you get towards the bottom, they've got like a big advantage on the bottom boards. And this is like board after board after board. That's like, you know, 10 points yeah. apart in rating. It's every single game should be interesting as long as, uh, oh, as long as people aren't, uh, you know, resigning. <laughs> yeah, there's no playing. deficits here, actually. Everybody's, uh, Pretty close in rating, which is um very good to see. So everyone's going to have great games here. I love this rook lift. Again, these are the kind of positions I thrive for. I love these kind of positions, whether white pieces or black, it doesn't matter. Just attacking type and dynamic positions where I can put my rook on g3, threaten knight f6, and mate on h7. And it's a, a series of moves forcing black to probably give up the light square bishop, which means then I get the light square control. And maybe I can, if I get my bishop or a nice battery, on the h7 diagonal i'm going to have complete domination of this position and it's yeah. opposite color bishop to happen the dark square bishop is only doing so much and compared to his my light square bishop it's like it's a problem i think white's actually almost crushing in a way if uh black does not find the right moves here rich g3 mm -hmm. is still a thing yeah but i know he has king f8 i know he has king f8 and maybe you can play queen h7 yeah white's on the initiative here we just got to figure out what to do yeah so he's got a pick between rook g3 and e3, right? I mean, there's two different ways to play it. You can go for the king side attack, or you can go for controlling the d file as well. But you can't, you can't have both. Can't have both, correct? Cannot have both. Queen h4, and after queen h4, there's rook g3. He's going for All it. All right, Canty approves. Canty approves of the aggression <laughs> from the hammer. <laughs> Let's go. Swing it. He's swinging it. The hammer is in the air right now. He's about to come down with it. Rook g3. So. If this may seem that. silly, but I mean, there is a variation with the queen takes f4 that's still possible, right? And complicated. Yeah. Knight f6 check. The king just has to go to f8 instead of h8. Yes. To keep it a game. Correct. And, and I thought queen h7 was nice, but I mean, yeah. he might be able to just take the knight because he could run to e7. Right. And there's rook takes hurt. g7 in that position, which could be interesting. King can't take because of knight h5. Ah, uh, yes. But uh, then oh. black will play queen takes e5. <laughs> that would be sweet. Queen takes e5. Let me think. Oh, so, knight h7, queen h7. Yeah, that's a strong. Well, you can take on d7, and I'm right. okay. You can take on d7. Uh, King takes yeah, d7. Well. Play like rook h7. It's yeah. pretty complicated. It's pretty, pretty complicated. complicated. So, let's see. Oh, king f8 was just played without taking f4. So, we don't need to go down that rabbit hole any further. But uh, it was uh, worth hey, a little calculation there. The just jumped out the way. So White needs to figure out what to do. Is he going yeah. to play knight f6 anyway? Is this a anyway move? I don't think it is. I don't think knight f6 anyway would be any good. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, he can always run. You would love to check on the dark squares here, like queen b4 check, but he does can block queen e7. Yeah. How about I would love something that. like knight g5? Nope, nope, it doesn't work. I was just thinking rook h3, rook h8, but that's nothing. This is, it's nothing. Yeah. Man, this is it's really hard. Really what, hard. What did Hammer have planned? Because now he's spending a couple minutes here. I mean, King F8 was one yeah, obvious just, answer, and finally he just plays E3 to defend his F pawn. And now yeah. his Rook is sort of like, I don't know, a little bit weird there. A little bit it weird. Is. Very weird. It's very weird. I still prefer White just because of the fact that uh, um, I, I have this play over here. I am so close to figuring it out. And mm -hmm. if I figure it out, it's over. That's usually <laughs> how it is. <laughs> just figure it out. Because it feels like, you know, bishops, I always like to tell, you know, everyone or students wise too, like, you got to play with the pieces you have, which I think Hammer's doing a great job of doing that. Um, having a bishop and a knight. If having a knight, you need to close the position to a little bit, keep it a little closed. So if it's super wide open, the bishops are monsters and his bishops aren't monsters. So he did a good job of that. Now he forced it, not forced, but the trade is off. So yeah. Yeah, black's doing fine. Black's doing absolutely fine now after after this solid position. And I think this is really good to learn on like a educational aspect of how solid his position is now as black, but there is a target, clear target yeah. on G seven. There's a pretty interesting like strategic question that's coming here, which is what's more important or valuable, the G file or the D file, right? Because 
White's kind of locked his rook into g3. He played rook g3 with that lift, and then he played e3. So it's like, okay, you're not you're not really going to get the d file now. On the g file, he's got a target, but on the d file, Black can you know get all the way into d2 or d1. It doesn't win anything, but it sure applies some pressure from the sides. So that's correct. Pretty that's hard correct. to say who who this who this position is actually going to favor. Um, right. How do you, uh, I guess, uh, we increase the pressure. I'm wondering, whoa, there it is. He just lashed, not lashed out, but that is not, that's a very unexpected move. Oh. E5 on the board. Oh, man. E5. You can't take it. That's why. Tang's Dang. looking a little angry. Tang hit him with a move just now. Queen B4 check, though. But then C5. Rook takes, takes, queen takes, check. King, you got to go like on the file. Pawn takes. Oh, but he takes with check. He takes your bishop with check. But then you have f3. Oh, my goodness. This is wild. This is wild. Because this king could be made it. If he goes to the g file, we do get up the bishop. Like queen before, c5. Rook takes c5. All these other lines. Check. King runs over and you sack it. He just plays bishop f3 and gets out of the way. So now mm -hmm. f4 is a real thing. It is a pawn we can take. Interesting. I thought he was going to play rook c to g1 in this position. It has the same idea of rook g4 as bishop f3 does, but um, you're able to do it too. Brings you're one more piece. Yeah. But okay, bishop f3 is played. Now what's happening on g takes f4? Maybe then queen b4 check and take on f4 with the queen. Oh, it works different now. Maybe no, but the bishop's on f4. So uh, I mean f3. You could take. You could take on c5. Very well could take on c5 after yeah. queen b4 check. Because you can uh, you can get your pawn back if he takes. On f4, queen b4 check, I'm assuming. And then uh, you could take on c5 if c5. If c5. Greg Shahadi in the chat. What's up, man? Who are, you, who are we rooting for um, in this one right here? That's a good question. Who am I rooting for? I like my boy. <laughs> I don't know. But g takes f4. Tank's trying to take him apart <laughs> on the dark squares to get this guy I'm, involved I'm on b6. Oh, man. There it is. Queen b4 check. There it is. All right. Well, the king can't go to the G file anymore. That's clear. Um. Oh yeah. Hammer doesn't want any queen trade. No queen takes f4 for him. Queen to e4. Yeah, no, none of that. He don't want it. He's got b7. He's got rook g1, rook yeah. g8. He's got rook g4 to f4. Okay. <laughs> it's funny. Before White couldn't play f takes g5 because his bishop was hanging on the fourth rank, and now Black can't play f takes g3 because his queen's hanging <laughs> on the fourth rank. Just reverse the pin on him. Kind of cuts you know both what? ways. I think and it's crazy how chess is. This is a beautiful game that we all love and play. And if you look at it, two moves ago, Black was doing nice. He was straight. I think White is definitely on a huge initiative here. If you look at the pieces, first off, Queen's pinned. The Rook is very nice on D7, and he's bringing his brother from the other side to double up. But the Bishop on B6 looks absolutely terrible. It's blocked. It doesn't do anything. We have attacks on G8. And if we figure out what to do with the Queen, this is going to be devastating. I mean, absolutely devastating. So... We do need to figure out what to do here as black. And that is the that's the issue. Black, you also need a chemistry with your pieces. And the rook, the two rooks and a bishop are fine over there by themselves doing, you know, looking good. But this queen is is, is on the other side of the board by herself, not really helping out much. So pretty pretty difficult, honestly. To so, say the least. So feeling white here, feeling white with the coordination yeah, advantage. White's coordination is really nice. I guess Tang's planning to hide his king on e7. And correct. It's, it's funny how long this pawn's going to sit here on f4, right? <laughs> right. Maybe rook g4 to take on f4 just to get the f6 square. Right. But anytime he does, it's committal because queen takes f2, right? And correct. Then, and you, you're gonna have, you know, there it is. Rook g4. You got to go for it. You got to yeah. go for it. Okay. I feel like I'm hammered right now. Yeah. Because I got right. Rook g4. Okay. Takes, he takes f4, and then you take it on h6 or uh, maiden 2. All right. All right. Queen takes f4. Queen I mean, takes f4. I don't know how you get out of queen takes f4. Maybe move the rook from d7. So queen takes, and then he goes rook d7. Rook check, rook d7, and then rook check, king e7, queen f6, king d7, queen takes f7, king. Oh, that's mate. We can that's mate it. it. That's it. We got you the bishop covering c6 too in that line. Oh yeah, you get made it. Oh, you gotta be careful. You went so fast, I couldn't even show people. But uh... <laughs> yeah, he's well, there. Made it is. It. There I showed it is. them. He's made it. Rook d2 was oh, played. Oh my. Queen f7, seven. even oh, better. Big fella. That oh. Oh, he hit him in his forehead with that one. That was 
that was hard. That was like, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Jan yeah, Ludwig's like, like, if the gnomes don't win, it's not going to be my fault. I gave them something to cheer for. I gave the fans was... something to cheer for there. Wow. Man. Oof. Dang, guys. Yeah. You got a... What? Puzzle the chat likes it. Down. The chat likes it. Wow. Yeah. That was a shocker. He's going to turn some Minnesota fans into uh, Gnome fans. That's the <laughs> ultimate thing you can do as the leader of your team, right? You go in there, you beat the other guy, and like the game is so good that the oh, fans man. are like, next week I'm playing for your club. I'm playing for your team. Yeah. Man, that was good. I'm playing for your team now. So, yeah. Man. Oh, man. Now we got a London system. Yeah. yeah you, don't sound, you don't sound pumped about it. I am not at all. I hate the London system. All right. I am I'm not not that I hate it. I'm just like so boring, bro. Oh my goodness, it's so boring. Yeah. I just play tactics. Like, I mean, like I have a, a YouTube video, a clip out where you know they ask me, "Hey, uh, what you gonna do for your birthday?" Tactics. You know, what's my last name? Tactics. Like, <laughs> what'd you have for breakfast? Tactics. Like, it's it's everything right. is tactics, right? So I play that kind of game, and when I play the London system, I don't feel it at all. I don't. So yeah. I have to like. You have to have wait to... for it, man. You have to wait oh, man, for it. Bro, it's so boring. So I try to like just play different stuff against it. That's really whatever. However I feel that day, I'll play. Yeah. Blitz. Well, we saw an interesting uh, approach from Kevin Bordy of the Blitzstream against the London with that like quick queen b6, and then he sacked his pawn on d5 and castled queenside. But oh, I guess yeah, that was sweet. Yeah. I guess I guess that was maybe even too risky for you. It didn't look very good. Yeah, I'm not into that. I'm not into that stuff. I, it has to be like com enough compensation, and I like a aggressive chess. So B6 is actually I like this. Um, this way he's playing the London system is is the standard way. It's just like play put the bishop on D6 or E7, play B6 and the bishop on B7 and Knight E4. What I play now is actually I yeah. finch shuttle both bishops. So it gives me range of everything. So when they try to play E4, I'm ready to cross against the whole center. Mm -hmm. So I'll be able to do that. That's what I like to do now. But this is uh, the GM way. A lot of GMs play this way, actually, I would GM say. Way. I mean, I just call yeah. it GM way because most, like, if you look in a database, like, they all play it this way. Bishop D6 and the Bishop E7 way. Susan Polgar talks about that, too. Yeah. So the knight on B8 still needs to move. What's the deal with that guy? If he goes to D7, it hangs D6. So... If he goes to C6, he blocks the Bishop on B7. So I'm 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 waiting to find out. I'm waiting to find out. There's something for me to learn here. I'm not sure. What? Oh, yeah. That's a I nice move. That. I was just about to say knight e4. Knight e4. And Sharkima says 26 to 17. I know. I know, right? I know. Well, actually, it's 26 to 26 and a half, 18 and a half now. Ah, uh, so, so this move prevented knight e4. That's very nice. I don't think uh, everyone necessarily. You mean rick d1? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was saying too. I was like, "Oh, Rook D one was awesome. Like that was very smart because it did prevent ninety four. Because he wants some situation like this where he goes here and here and here and then whatever Knight C four, Knight takes E four, something and right, right. I always tell like everyone is under any any under twenty two hundred, under two thousand. Always be aware be aware of the X ray on the board. So there's Rook on D one, even though there's one, two, three, four, five, five pieces in between yeah. Rook yeah. and a Queen. Yeah. You still need to feel the uncomfortable pressure. Yeah, yeah. And he's still he's have, still harassing her with all that. Still harass, yep, through all of that. So you need to be aware of that. Uh, bishop yeah. g3. And what do we do? Queen c7? I don't know. Rook d8? I mean, you got to get the queen off the back rank. So I don't know if it's e7, c7, or rook d8. Yeah, well, so, after, maybe after. some move that threatens e5, basically, right? So queen c7, <laughs> queen e7, rook e8. All those moves might allow you to play e5 next. Right. Um. If you don't want to let white play knight e5, then queen c7 would be the move that prevents knight e5. Whereas the other moves, like if I go rook e8 or something, I'm controlling e5 enough times, but through the six pawn. So if white goes knight e5, then, then I'm stuck. And, yeah, you know, actually, back into that normal London stuff where mm -hmm. it gets kind of stodgy on e5, a little stonewall feeling. I used to hate, uh, actually, I, I would play the Carol Khan when I would play e4, and I play against the Carol Khan. I would put the uh, the knight on e5 and have crushing positions because this is very similar because the bishop, or the bad bishop, the light square bad bishop, or the French bishop, whatever, because they're cousins. But they, uh, that e5 square was very tough. So queen c7 absolutely makes the most sense. C takes d4, I would do too, not all the time because now e5 is all his. Like the center is like all of whites. But yeah. It is a clarification move, is what they like to say. Clarify, meaning like this, based off of how he takes, 
is going to be the trajectory of the rest of the game. So it's a clarifying takes, move, but unless yeah. Hammer has something good here, it's clarifying a bad position for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Because I was thinking the same thing, like, bro, I mean, I understand you're supposed to clarify, but maybe not this time. There's always right. exceptions in chess, and I think that might have been an exception. Okay. Just because you can't put anything on E4 or E5, and I don't know what your plan is now. Knight E7 and Knight F5 right. is the only thing I'm thinking. Okay. Other than that, I don't know. Yeah, because other than that. it looks like his two queenside pieces are on random squares where they're not particularly good. Um, opening this trade on the e on d4 opens the e-file for white, so it increases white's control over e5. Yeah, and all the white pieces are perfectly placed to sort of castle king side, play knight e5, and attack the black king. So yeah. and he plays g6. Geez. He just followed up with g6, and this is now like the French kind of position where you got to go knight e7, knight f5. Or it's a lot of maneuvering about to happen here. I'm really disappointed, man. I mean, it's like Hammer's been in a cave for four years and hasn't seen the London system become popular and doesn't know what he's doing, man. <laughs> right. It really I mean, feels like that, actually. It yeah. actually, I believe that because this is looking at all the games he played and then played this one. I mean, this is honestly close to crushing for White. I mean, I understand when like 1500s or 1300s play each other and somebody plays the London system and plops a knight on e5 and the other guy's like, I just don't know what to do about this opening, man. I hate this. But like, <laughs> come on, Hammer. You're 2600. You've seen the London. You've got to know some plans. This is not London system theory or this is not London system plan. I don't know what's going on. White has domination right now in the center. And especially like, I don't know what's next. Maybe, he, of course, he's not taking on g3 right now because you open the h file that's just suicide it's just not i'm not a move not happening but yeah. for white uh white has all kind of potential here he did play knight f3 and he's trying to figure out what to do next i wonder if he's gonna play bishop h4 because i don't know where this knight's going next actually there may have been uh there may have been something better than knight e5 also for for tang i mean what about bishop takes d6 right after g6 sort of making sure you trade the dark squared bishops when the opponent's got dark squares that are oh, weak everywhere wrong. Yeah, that would then, on, been... then on queen d6, you play knight e5. He can't trade because d takes e5 yes. wins a piece. So you get time to bring the second knight to f3. Yeah, second knight in. yeah and I would I figured that out from playing so many Carol compositions like that. I started yeah. figuring out trade and then knight e5 and then bring the other one in. It was it, it yeah. works like that every time. That's how it should be played. Looking at this a little different. This is like a French type version, but it's uh very similar with that idea. Yeah, that was that that would have been much better actually. Because this bishop is actually a clumsy piece i would say because it's not at the you, moment on g3 at the moment, yeah correct because knight he's not taking his bishop unless you castle if you castle then he's comfortable and it's okay to take on g3 yeah but it, it, but until then he's just never gonna take which means your bishop's kind of weird looking on g3 yeah maybe queen e3 queen h6 is an idea for knight g5 that's always an idea so well now the wait. bishop could go to h4 in some cases but he's also got to watch knight f4 Mm -hmm. Um, I'd like to play something aggressive like knight to g5. Ooh, knight g5 is but is maybe tempting. maybe it's just knight f5, and I'm not not f5. really wanting to take on e6 or f7 just yet. Bishop h4. I like the bishop h4 idea too because I always like to say provoke a weakness. I actually mm -hmm. uh, beat it, uh, international master um, Casa Corley actually a millionaire chess 2015. I poke mm -hmm. poke the weakness. On g5, in a Carol composition, just a random move. I just played bishop g5 just to see if it would create a weakness. And he did. He ended up playing h6. And I ended up having a winning position later on because I attacked that same weakness he made. So bishop h4 is one of those uh, those moves to be able to do that, to see if he plays f6 or something. And it's, it's just an, it's an annoying move to have to face. It also allows you to play g4 in some cases, but you do have to watch out for knight f4. So that's what he wants. Yeah. So maybe queen three first and then bishop h4 with that same idea stuff. Meanwhile, as Sharkima notes, um, Sharkima, whose opponent flagged twice against him without making a move, um, <laughs> okay. as he notes, Two uh, anyway. his blizzard have a 10-point lead at this point. So the gnomes are definitely fighting fighting uphill. There's still enough games to catch up in theory. It's actually 11 points now. But just, uh, just ticked up again yeah but uh definitely a pretty sizable lead would be a would be a big comeback here for the gnomes at this point pretty tough pretty tough game mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, no, it's it totally through. possible. I mean, we could see the comeback. We could. A6. So, Hammer saying White's not really doing anything, and he's going to have time for B5, B4 in the old minority yeah. attack. Yeah, that's right. And A6 is, uh, that's one of the moves. That's a London system move, quotation marks, for Black in this line. Because you do have to stop Bishop A6. And that, they actually play that, which was like... Uh, very interesting to me, a very interesting idea. And a6 is a common move to stop them from playing bishop a6 and also yeah. preparing b5, like you said, too. And then here he, here he goes with the queen h6 idea. That's where he's going. Well, the knight's, the knight's covering it. So he's either going to trade on f5 or he's going to play bishop f4. And I've got this feeling like he might want to play bishop f4. But there would be sure. f6 then. So i got to be very careful before oh, I Oh, he played it like right that. now, actually. He All just right. played f6. Already played. So the knight's going to have to come to g4 by process of elimination. All right. That's all he's got. Stranger things have happened. Yes, right. Surprising that hasn't crashed the knight on h5. What up? What's going on? Maybe it doesn't trade, do anything. Trade, trade. E6 Quantity is hanging. Yes. He's going to have to cover that. Uh, he could play knight h6 if he wants to try and just get some stuff off the board, make a little room. I was thinking that knight h6 was... Uh, it is a possibility. I'm sure he sees that. Um, man, what else would you do? I don't know. Can you use the H file? That's going to take too long. King H2, Rook H1, King G1. This is too yeah. long. That's too long. Uh, yeah, and the Rook's not even that bad on the E file. So the I don't choices know, maybe are you can play like Rook E2, Rook D to E1. Yeah, double up, yeah. To put everybody double on up. that. I'm not pumped about then that, rookie though. coming, no, because then he could just go rookie eight. He can just go rookie fun. eight. Black may even right. try and play e5 at yeah. some point. Correct, correct. So he's thinking about all that right now, as we're thinking about it as I'm well. And he goes sucks. with the check. Yeah. That's what he goes with. Where is Kramnik? Kramnik, best chess player. Goat. That's right, man. He's one of the greatest. Absolutely. Yeah. So he moved king g7, takes, takes. But isn't, and, isn't it oh, redundant yeah. to say best chess player goat? I mean, then it just sounds like you're talking about a goat who plays chess well. Best Either chess say he's the best chess player or mind. say goat. Like, right, the goat. Cramming and then also the you're goat. wrong because it's Carlson. <laughs> right at this point, absolutely, Carlson. I mean, it's, it's been that for a long time, but Carlson. I'm wondering if rookie four is a move. Oh, yeah. you're Just like getting that from Hanson's world. Yeah, today. Hanson's world. Four. <laughs> Rookie four, but just that because. sounds like the comeback album of uh of that that boy that brother band Hanson. Uh, Hanson, right? The Hanson. <laughs> yeah, rookie four. You could play that anytime you want to with White, I guess. Hanson world, rookie four. Yeah, you could do that whenever. Rookie. Oh wow, what's the next move? He's thinking Sacktown. He's thinking Bishop f five, pawn takes f five, queen h five. At some point, could be risky okay. though. I'm not convinced. Not convinced. Yeah, I'm not convinced. What is what's the next move? What rookie four? There we go. Hanson's world. Okay. Yep. Album one. And he rookie just comes four, back. And double up. So the extra problem with the knight on h4 was that if in that position Tang took the rook on e4, then after f takes nice e4, draft. the knight's trapped. And then you got g5. Right. So he's dealing yeah. with g5 issues on top of it all. So um so, so he brings he the knight back. Draw. back but like he's not particularly threatening to take on e4 here either right and the knight h2 and stuff well i guess i guess in uh in jan ludwig's world he was slightly threatening to take yeah, that yeah, I guess he was just not with the it wasn't enough compensation he was saying i guess it just wasn't enough it had to be enough compensation man that's crazy See, you have the pawn and you got the f pawn you can play g5 f5 f4 pawn storm you lock up the center two bishops it seems right right it really does so it like, right. I don't know. I play like bishop c6 here or something. Bishop e4, f4, knight h2, bishop b5, rook e3, oh, yeah. oh, f5. Bishop. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah I want to make sure the rook goes right. to the square the knight's trying to get to because now the rook's kind of mm -hmm. trapped on e3 and awkward, and I've just got like, you know, g5 and f4 coming. How could this not be good for, for the gnome? I have no How idea. could that not be good, man? I don't know. I, have, I don't know what he was thinking. Anyway, they do have three minutes, both of them, but still. Yeah. Knight to D2, still rookie four anyway. Still play rookie four if he wants to. White, White's just looking to trade these rooks off. I mean, if all the rooks come off the board, White's position's good all over again, actually, because they can just go to attack D5. They've got a pawn majority on the queen side. Hmm. Without rookie four, I don't really know what, what, what he's up to. 
10 point lead with 12 games left. Thanks so much for keeping us updated, Sharkima, as we watching this. Oh, uh, Sharkima cool. even counted the games left. That's good to know. Even count them. Yeah. 12 games. That means any game now would, would clinch it for Minnesota at this point, right? I mean, they're like one or two games right. away from clinching. Yeah. Well, barring something amazing happening in the next 10 minutes, uh, Minnesota's had a very, very confident showing this first round. They got four quick points out of the gates for nothing and then never gave up the lead. Uh, yeah, that's true. Four points and then that grew to 12. Yeah, I mean, Gnome's, no, Gnome's never even got any closer than, than that. All right, hey, pawn hey, trade. Hey, Trying to gradually open up his dark squared bishop. Yeah, he has both of the bishops. Probably want to play f5, f4 a second time. So now let's see how this play happens. Yeah, you're right, f5, f4, absolutely, absolutely. Especially with this knight being non-existing. But if you do have f5, he might try, well... It's okay if he does, but knight of three, knight, knight d2, knight of three, knight e5. But that's too long. I think it's too long. Yeah. It's really not working. I think he should just trade rooks, put his bishop on f2. You know, then play like queen b3 or something. Yeah, he's really like, what is that move about? What in the world is queen d1? <laughs> Waiting around. <laughs> I have no idea. Like you, it's the same square almost. Like you've got all the same squares. I didn't understand how. Yeah. Oh, it even let Hammer play h5, h4, which he would rather do than f5, oh, f4. Man. The reason I was calling for f5 before was because on h5 before, there might have been bishop takes g6 takes in some g6, case, right? Yeah. In so, between, yeah. But once the queen comes to d1, He'd much rather leave that pawn on f6 to stop any of those knight f3 ideas you mentioned, cover some squares in the center, yeah. and cover just get rid of that h pawn, which he doesn't need, open the h file for his rook. I'm going to see Hammer play rook h8 or something at some point, right? You don't want to trade rooks anymore. Yeah, Black. not in this position, correct, especially with his rook being, and you also cover, this is just understanding what you have and understanding your position. This rook or the file is blocked one, two, three, four. Five out of the eight squares on the e-file are covered by black. So yeah. that's just crazy to understand and know that you have that square kind of covered. And so you can move the rook on h8 and actually just start working, putting in some operation. I think rook Tang's going to be regretting not having traded rooks on the e-file when he could have because this is a position where if white can get it to an end game, he's fine. I, I don't understand. Uh, this is difficult. And now, now he's okay. Put the knight on e3. Now he's just mm -hmm. fine. Yeah, once the knight's on e3, he's okay. Put the bishop on f3. I don't know. I, I think that Hammer needed to play rook h8. I think Tang needed to play rook takes rook for like five moves there. <laughs> All right. Bishop c7. Is Hammer wearing a live, live strong bracelet? I am not sure. If you're sure. watching his stream, then you know better than we do. <laughs> no, than Whoever's we asking do. us about it. Fins, question mark. Blizzards are up twelve games now, and probably, yeah, probably they've just clinched it recently. End game is okay against Bishop here. Sorry, it depends on the end game, but this one here, honestly, yes, it's okay because it's a slightly closed position. When you have closed positions, you want usually knights, of course, but most positions closed will open up. So having these these bishops are uh, eventually going to be good. But right now, they suck. They are not that good. I mean, mm -hmm. The dark square bishop is actually really good. But yeah. That's it. Now he's trading off the light square. Or trying to. Whoa. It's interesting, because white could trade and play knight e3, and d5's gone, and he's got to take on b2, and white gets to come into d5. And uh, the black king could get a little bit open there. But okay. Just, Goes for something else. Four. Knight f4. Yeah, definitely not taking that. That's knight jump, did a lot of jump in here. They yeah. both are at a minute. Bishop takes. He took that. Yeah. King seven. Yeah. King, mm. I don't know. King h2? That might be scary. I mean, even queen e5 is possible, but there's no need, no pressing need to do it. Unless queen e1's a problem. Queen e5 is a move, too. Takes, yeah, takes, so you can solidify with f4. So yeah, so Queenie Five, um, I think yeah. he's gonna go for it. 
What else? Yeah, that's a strong there? move. That's check two. That forces the trade. Yeah. You can't create a pass pawn after I go f4. But black will play g5 like, right away. Oh, bishop takes that five. five. Yeah. Oh, it's hanging. Yeah, queen e5. Queen There's five nothing for black move. there after queen e5. Hmm. Well, either I'm struggling to understand this game or it's not up to the normal 2600 GM level <laughs> because I keep thinking I got the right idea and then they do something and else, do man. something weird. Like, what is this? Isn't queen e2 winning? How do you defend the bishop? Something's wrong with someone. And I don't oh, know it's if checks it's me everywhere. It's perpetual. Okay, because queen e2 straight up winning. Oh, there it is. He found it. Well, he okay. just has to play queen e5 anyway. Queen e5 anyway. And then... Yeah. So now, important, black can't play g5 because the bishop takes f5. Right. Um, and without g5, white will play f4, and then black can't make a pass pawn like like we were saying. And that's it. That's to be a draw. That means if you shuffle from here, f4, king e6, g5 anyway, and then you can do something like, I don't know, shuffle. I mean, whatever. You can shuffle back and forth. Take on f4, and he can't progress. King f3, really. Interesting. Maybe he wants to win. He's keeping open a route for his own king to get to g5 by playing this way. Mm. All right, so maybe this is a way to try and win for white. Um, bishop on d1. What's going on? Maybe he's looking at playing f3 and g4 at some point. Maybe just sort of two volume waiting for black to play. Because, yeah, what's black going to do? This bishop needs to cover a4. Maybe it also needs to cover g6. You're going to run out of moves here soon. Bishop to e2, yeah. and you're still busy defending stuff. Oh, how do you proceed from here is the question. Yeah, Tang's trying to put a Tsugsvang on him. <laughs> g5, not a move. What if you walk the king back around, like in a way where you play bishop d7, Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so he just played that too. Well, bishop d7, king f7, king g7, king h6, and then g5 check. Okay, maybe he wants to go for king g5. I mean, by playing his pawns on g3 and f3, the black king on e5 won't be able to get further forward. But black might be able to play f4 right after this line. I'm just going to show it real quick while they're repeating moves, everybody. If king g5, king e5, king g6, black could play f4. And that probably you know gets his king active. We actually do have a pawn break now, by the All way. Right. So he went for g4 himself g4. as a pawn break. Yeah, that keeps control of it. I think the key is he really doesn't want to let Jan Ludwig's king get into things. So here, if black traded everything on g4, bishop g4 check, his king has to retreat, and white's got a great position. So I figured he would do that, too. He actually just okay. captured and played h4. Makes the pass pawn. I expect g5 yeah. from white. Mm -hmm. And then what's he going to play? Bishop d7, bishop g4, king e7, something like that. Interesting. That could turn around. That could it's turn eight around. eight seconds for him, too, by the way. I mean, he's down to eight seconds. He had this before, too. Mm-hmm. Taking his time. Bishop d7. He's taking his time. Oh, that was good. That was good. Yeah. He lost the pawn there. Dang. He nice lost. Nice hang. Nice. All, All right. right. To, bishop oh, f5, maybe? Hard. But then bishop c6. Mm. He needs a tempo first. All right. C2 is coming. It's two seconds on the clock. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, bishop Better E6. put that bishop on that diagonal. I wonder. It's looking wonder. like a draw, but I guess it's not guaranteed yet. Right. He wants to go here, take. Then take B2, take A4, oh, and then bring the bishop to F7. There it is. Oh, wait. You're right. Bring the bishop around. It's not over yet. <gasps> no, he can get around. He can get around. Bishop G8. Yeah. yeah I think it's winning for white. The bishop doesn't have a long enough diagonal if it goes to b1 and h7. Yeah, bishop b1, h7. Uh, no, I think his diagonal is long enough. You go enough. bishop g6, then you play king e7, yeah, king f8. Back. Or wow. king g5, h6, yep. Oh, my goodness. Two ways oh, to yeah. skin that. That's that was right. really well played by Andrew, that end game. Oh, yeah, that, that comes oh, from... Oh, uh, my. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Because that's a yeah. Devoretsky, Devoretsky end game. And if you have Devoreski Endgame Manual, there is a chapter just on this right here. 
I mean, that was sweet to see in person like that. Wow. Like, very nice Playing guys. for the Zugzwang instead of trying to penetrate with his king. And, uh, yeah, then he got a very favorable version of it because he actually, like, reached a situation where Jan Ludwig didn't think he had anything better to do than G5 himself. So mm. he's sort of letting the white king come into G5 anyway while losing a pawn in advance. So, wow. And that's what happens. See, like, when you when you don't go to our school, you don't draw at all. Like, you just – either it's win or loss. There's nothing in between. So – that's yeah. just how it was for him. So it was. It's okay. It happens. And on to the next game. Wow. So who's uh who's next? We should be uh clinching. Actually, that should be the match. Yeah, that should be the match There's here. Two games. Art it must Vega be a game or two playing. left. We'll see Art Vega playing a second match today. He's got White here. He's scored a point so far. He's playing a tough game right now. Attacking oh, yeah. with some um, his down king's a little weak, but uh, his opponent is at six seconds. He's e also down to e six probably to break up the yeah, structure. E6, absolutely, queen f four, queen h six right now. Mm -hmm. Now please bishop e f eight to g seven. Oh, the rook's hanging. Don't play bishop g seven. Don't listen to me. There we go, e6. That's the right kind of move. Knight g5. He probably needs it. Does mm -hmm. not go for it. That may have been the chance. What in-game manual again? I need that. It's called Deveretsky in-game manual. Yes, oh, guys, no! Deveretsky he ran played. out of time. It's like a couple oh, seconds there each. Yeah, that was intense. Oh, ouch. All right. Ouch. That was the last game. That was the last game there, too. Cool. All right. Fantastic showing for the for the Minnesota Blizzard, the Blizzard fan club. Man, that's what's up. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good. Anybody surprised so, you today? Any player or any team turn up in a way you didn't expect? Honestly, I expected it to be like this. Battles, unpredictable stuff. Um, yeah, that was it. And I see Hammer play Hanson a lot. So I knew Hammer would might edge him out there because they play all the time. I see him play. So other than that, I was very curious to see how Tang did, how Tang was going to do. Yeah. Well, I think he's got to be pretty happy because that was the beauty of a game that he played with the last one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great showing as he always does. You know, he always comes to play his hardest, best chess. So I think it was pretty good. Shout out to all the fans, all nice. the fans here that played every last one of you. That is awesome. Especially congratulations to the Blizzard today that you actually helped um, contribute to the 45 points there. Yeah. And also to the chess bras, anyone that played for the first match today. Congratulations to you for contributing to your team. Yeah. And congratulations to Ali Eplo, who won the whole match for them somehow by uh, by recruiting people, telling them to get out there and play. Oh, that's sweet. I didn't know that. <laughs> or so he <laughs> so he says of himself. Um, <laughs> so we'll be back next week uh, with more with week two of this Division D. Um, if you didn't manage to play, I saw a few people asking, "How do I get in once the match has started?" If you didn't manage to play this week, next week's your chance. Be sure to be there before the match starts. Join your favorite fan clubs, get into live chess, go to tournaments, upcoming tournaments, and uh, join those. They're posted at least an hour before our show starts, which will be again at 9 a.m. Pacific time uh, next Saturday. And uh, now we got an awesome streamer to go raid. We've got Firuzja, Ali Reza Firuzja, the newest 2700 in the world. And he's just a kid. He's streaming right now. So make yeah. sure you guys go over there, hang out with him, watch some spectacular chess. I also put our our Twitch links in the chat, which is mine and David's are there in the chat. So make sure you guys hit us with a follow to support the streams. See you guys later. Thank you so much for hanging out. Peace.